All right. Well, hello, everyone, if anyone's here yet. <laughs> <laughs> so we are here. You guys might know him as Book Songs and Other Magic, but we're going to be calling him Gareth today because it's a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, so far, nobody's here yet, but I'm sure they'll show. Well, yeah. Gareth, you know what I was thinking? Not only are we going to do this, because I filmed a review on this already. It's just not up yet. Oh, have you? Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. I filmed it already. It's just not It's just not out yet. I actually edited it a little bit this weekend while I was gone. And cool. uh, I just have to put the final touches and stuff on it. It's going to be in one of my, like, I read X amount of books things. But, yeah, I thought if you want, like course we can focus on the poetry because that's why everybody's here but uh but yeah we have to say we can always uh i do want to mention this too because this may this had me in stitches gareth this was hilarious at points <laughs> that's cool yeah there's a couple of funny well there's about three deliberately funny ones um and uh well they I, I wondered as it was you if you like the um carnival one did you like the carnival one, I the did, one where they... i'm gonna tell you straight you know the one that one of my favorite ones though and I'm not, Go I'm not, I can't say exactly because I don't want to ruin it for anybody watching, but the one where, is it Ethel? Oh, what's her name? Is it Ethel? Ethel Pinchworthy. Ethel Pinchworthy. When she gets taken <laughs> up, I was crying. I was laughing so hard, Gareth. It was so funny. It was so funny. The, um, how can I say this? The, um, preoccupation that the aliens have with a particular animal. <laughs> I was crying. I was laughing so hard. It was so funny. <laughs> yeah, I did uh, giggle while I was writing it. Um, oh, you should have. That was hilarious. I really enjoyed writing it. <laughs> and I, the one with the, and uh, God, is it Corsica? I'm terrible at these fantasy names, Gareth. Oh, Corsilia. Corsilia, um, yeah. With the band. No yeah. Sleep till, yeah. Except with the band. Yeah. That needed to be like, uh, I don't know, animated series or something. It needed, <laughs> that's what that needed. Oh, I'd love that. that. That well, was too funny that, too. Because that becomes this book, doesn't it? So that book, that so the Brown Yelp Gang, um, That's is the right. last. That's the last novel I wrote. So so yeah, um, and uh, yeah, this is this is completely mad, uh, and yeah. Well, that would um, be my next book that I read by you then, because that one I I was reading it like this needs to be like a four part animated series. Like there was so <laughs> much fun happening with that. Isn't it was that really awesome. it was so funny. <laughs> Well, yeah, we've got people showing up, Gareth. We got six people oh. here. Mr. Star is oh, cool. here. Hello, the dead poets. <laughs> Hello. Ah, uh, Horror Gardener. Hello, Pax and Gareth. Hello, Horror Gardener. In peace here, the whole reason we're even here. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll have to explain that. Thanks, MP. Yeah, thanks, MP. Uh, so uh, you guys might be wondering, like, because, you, you know, Pax plans things, like, way in advance. Why is Gareth on, like, a week out. Uh, it's because <laughs> MP made a post on Instagram and tagged both me and Gareth in it. And Gareth thought we had like set something up and he'd forgotten. So he messaged me and was like, hey, am I scheduled for something? And I was like, no. Do you want to be? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? So and I was like, and honestly, we were going to do it Saturday, but then I was like, I had, to, I had to be out of town. I was going to be out of town. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, MP, you tell your supervisor that this is all your fault anyway, that you have to watch. Uh, <laughs> yes, this is a work night. This is not even a weekend. Yeah. Yeah, it's a work night. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. M's here. Hello, M. She, she made it. Yay. Hi, Emily. Oh, that is Radis here. Hello. Oh, awesome. Ah, uh, Miss Silver Scribe. Our shot of purple glitter. <laughs> uh william's here hey william i've been william. loving your bird stuff that was really cool some of the bird stuff you've been posting all right guys well um if you came here right at the beginning you heard me yakking about gareth's book tintel's transformation i do have a review coming on this um so we're not going to spend a lot of time here but i just want to tell you guys this is hilarious this is so funny I, this is really enjoyable <laughs> Um, but what we're going to be here to talk about, though, is a permanent verb. And Gareth was nice enough to send these to me, like, what, a couple months ago now? Yeah, I think it was a few months yeah. ago now. Yeah, um, yeah. So, yeah, we're here to talk about permanent verb. This is Gareth's poetry book. And so, Gareth, in, like, true dead poet fashion, really the main thing that I always want to know is, like, what made you start writing poetry? Where you get it from? What's your inspiration? Well, 
I was writing poetry before I was doing anything else creative, actually, because I was writing poetry uh, before I was singing and before I learned to play an instrument and before I was writing anything else. Mm -hmm. uh, so right back to when I was 16, I was writing poetry. So it's a long time ago. Yeah. Um, I don't think anything in the book is that old. I think it's, it's you know, that, so that stuff that old has gone way, you know, some sort of been lost to the four winds. But, um, yeah, so I've been doing it for quite a while. And I think the fact that I've nipped into it now and again meant that by the time I wanted to write permanent verb, I think I'd done it for a while. So I had a kind of a, a style, if you like, or I had a voice. Um, so I, I think that's true. Confident. You can see that in your book. Like there's an overarching yeah. style. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Um, yeah. I mean, it's quite, it's quite, I mean, you just said about how the short stories are quite funny or a lot of them are, this is very serious book in it. The mm -hmm. poetry book is very, is quite a lot more downbeat, but, um, yeah, I think, uh, you can explore, I think, I don't know. It, I think there's an art to doing comedic poetry and I, and I, I know for me, I guess I explore a lot of mental health stuff and maybe kind of character portraits and, and those kind of things. Right. Um, so yeah. You do. You absolutely that. do. And I mean, I've pulled, uh, don't worry, guys, I've pulled out some, some stuff. Gareth doesn't want to read, even though he has the better accent. Uh, <laughs> I told him he has the better accent. He doesn't want to read, so I'm going to read him. Um, but there are, um, since you are, because we share a lot of the same, like, background when it comes to our careers. Um, so I, I think maybe some of our experiences might overlap when it comes to stuff like that. But my big question that I had is, like, how do you think your music Oh, I missed the question. Are you? You? I don't know if oh. that's. Can you say the question again? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, how do you? How do you think your music affects your poetry? Like, do you think they overlap a lot? How? How would you describe that relationship between like your musical side and your poetry side? Well, there's some direct links because there are some poems that became lyrics, mm -hmm. and there are some lyrics that I rewrote into poems for the book as well. Um, so well, I say some, there's a couple. Uh, most of the poems are straight poems that weren't lyrics, but that does happen. So there is a little bit of overlap with that. But I, I guess I think I'm probably, I probably do think about rhythm a lot mm -hmm. um, when I'm writing. So I think that probably comes out. Uh, and I and I do, I like it when I don't rhyme. Um, and maybe it's because there's a lot of pressure to rhyme in songs. Right. And maybe writing poetry frees me up to not worry about that and maybe that's a thing so that might be like how it kind of separates a little bit oh that um, is so interesting though that is yeah, so interesting I, well sometimes i can find it a bit i mean there is a song actually from the next album we're making at the moment that i'm quite proud of some of the rhyming some of the rhyming is mental <laughs> and like when i played the song to the rest of the band said yeah, this is my new song what do you think um, they were they were all going oh nice rhyming on a few of the lines so it's nice when you get that but ultimately you, I can feel certainly when I'm writing poetry I can feel a little bit restricted by the rhyming thing you know and I want to say something and if I'm thinking well that's not the right word but it's the word I want to use but it doesn't rhyme I think I just want to use it you know mm -hmm. so I do think that's a bit of a thing um, but then also I there's a song I wrote called um, uh, who whoever I am which is um, off it's from an album from 2015 and i'm quite pleased with it. i like the lyrics of it and it's a very um there was something happening in my job and i was wrestling with some big career decisions and i wrote this song whoever i am about the dilemma i had and the fact that i had to say look i can't do everything do what you know you can do and if there's consequences because you can't you want you know because you're being asked to do everything and you can't do everything don't worry about it live with it so that was kind of like the point of the song but I quite like the fact that none of it rhymes and it still works. So, right. so I quite like that as well. So the rhyming thing is kind of funny, but I do think the rhythm thing is quite important in the way I write. And I think it's an accidental thing. If it doesn't, if it doesn't fit with, if it doesn't sit well with me rhythmically, then I don't like it. Right. Well, I mean, because you're probably, I mean, at least in the his, in the very tiny history of the dead poets, uh, you're probably like the biggest musician that we've had. So I was really curious as to how like your musician side played into your writing of poetry of those two things crisscrossed or whatever. So that's very interesting, yeah. especially like the, the focus you have on rhyming and rhythm. That's very neat. Very yeah. Neat. I know well, a lot of people also, like rhyming in their poems. Yeah. 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 And, 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 and I get that. I absolutely get that. 
And when it's nice, it's really nice. Mm-hmm. But I suppose I find it hard to... I often find the rhyming word doesn't really tell the right story, I think. No, so, I agree. I agree. It was like you said, to harken back to what you said, if it's not the right word, it's not going to convey the right feeling. Yeah. And you write a poem to convey a feeling. Yeah. So I agree with you. I think that kind of supersedes the rhyming, in my opinion. You know, my my humble opinion. I think it uh, <laughs> it supersedes the 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 need to rhyme sometimes. Now, those but, but, people who can rhyme and still get across that feeling have a talent that I can't even fathom. But yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. I think sometimes it's but, just not the right word. Yeah, but what is really weird is I don't seem to have that issue with lyrics. So if I if I'm writing words to songs. The rhyming just comes naturally anyway. So, mm-hmm. that so do you make think sense. like your poetry mind and like your musician side, like they are separate to a certain degree in that regard? I think there is a separation. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, they, they kind of live together. They Maybe they meet on weekends. <laughs> and maybe that's the thing. <laughs> they they have, have custody of the brain on the weekends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, little, little those... Um, Numbskulls. What was that comic? Was it Dandy or Beano where they had these um, little men in the brain that would operate stuff? Maybe the poetry numbskulls and the lyrics numbskulls have a little chat now and again. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> they, they cross lines every now and then. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, let's catch so, up. Let's see what's happening. So we got Bad is Right. I don't write poetry, but I enjoy reading poetry out loud in my videos. Lots of appreciation of the art of the mind when it comes to poetry. I agree. I agree. I don't dabble in it much myself bad but i agree with you it's nice to read and uh see other people's creativity <laughs> all right he does have a great accent M. I told him it's so much better than mine his wow is, his is beloved the world over mine is <laughs> like making ears bleed the world over uh i would love to hear poetry back this is a great job speaking of other masterpieces thank you well we are because i had a reason for asking about the music thing as soon as we catch up on the comments uh, all lyric is poetry, not all poetry is lyric. Do you agree, Gareth? Uh, yeah, I, th- I think um, there are, there's a scale because one of the things, because I'm a music teacher as well, and one of the things I love talking to my students about is the big explosion of the singer-songwriter art form in the 60s when lyrics went from being hooks that were designed to get people to sing along, like the, um, you know, like the British Invasion kind of style of, you know, She Loves You, Yeah, 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 and stuff like that, mm-hmm. and the rock and roll songs, to your Joni Mitchells and your Leonard Cohens and, and James Taylor, people like that, who were literally trying to think about, well, what does what do, what do I really, really think? What, you know, what is my soul saying? You know, that right. was a new way of writing lyrics. And I think now more lyrics are written like that, but it wasn't like that originally, you know, so exactly. lyrics were a device to sing, weren't they? See, I, I've yeah. been... I've been trying to, in the back of my head, I've been trying to like brush up on some of the music that I wanted to like inject into this just because I know you're a musician. You said one of the words, have you ever heard the Blues Traveler song Hook? Yes, 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 yeah. yes. I love that song. I do too. I love that song. <laughs> I do yeah, too. Yeah, I, was yeah. playing it, I was playing it in the car and it, I made like this middle note, like I got to make sure to mention that to Gareth because like the That's whole awesome. idea of the hook bringing you back. I just feel like yeah, as a yeah. musician, you would appreciate that. Uh, yeah. So I tried to make a little note to remember the Blues Traveler song hook. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Hola. Hola, Big Heart Books and Classics. Alex. Yeah, here. I am. Uh, Bad is right. said, beautifully said, Gareth. Yeah, oh, thank you. Uh, I enjoy reading and writing form poetry. And then this on it. Sit. Yes, actually. I think that's awesome, though. I think that's awesome. Yeah. That's definitely a, a niche for that, for sure. Oh, and our resident poet, Nim, is here. Yeah, awesome. That's, our, that's, first, our first honest. dead poet. Hey Nim. Yeah. Uh, everyone stand. <laughs> Hello to Nim and M. Nim and M. That's the most poetry I've made all day. Uh, I adore your accent too. Well, thank you, Emily. You're just very nice. <laughs> <laughs> See, but Emily, I don't have to twang when I say your name. Uh, <laughs> everyone's saying hello. Oh, Alan says I've seen James Taylor five times now. Last time, summer this year. Cool. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, well, talking about lyricists and going to see them live, the last gig I went to, um, obviously because of my own, uh, was uh, Joe Jackson. Do you know Joe Jackson? I don't. I don't um, he's a, Jackson. yeah, he's a guy from the eighties. Uh, 
he's still going, obviously. So I saw him a little while ago. Well, it was about a month ago. And uh, he's actually from this area. So that was quite cool. But um, he's he's done some amazing lyrics. Um, and if you if you get a chance, that his, one of his big hits is called Is She Really Going Out With Him? Okay. Um, uh, and uh, check out the words because they're so clever. And it's real kind of real life, um, you know, uh, there's just um, the way that he talks about this, this sort of, it's like a gossipy song. It's just fantastic. Oh, well, cool. So, yeah. yeah. No, it's I'll really have to. Yeah, yeah. See, um, I guess the last show that I went to was uh, Anthrax. So. <laughs> <laughs> Slightly different lyrics. Slightly different. <laughs> just a tad. Uh, Nim writes beautiful poems. Except she definitely does. Yeah. I'm thinking about my giant rant about songs not being poetry on poetry tube newbie tag. Nim, don't worry. Don't worry. I've already filmed my poetry tag, my newbie tag. It's okay. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'd love to do a video on that. There'd be nice because it is quite a complicated question. You should get you have a really uh, interesting viewpoint for that. You should. It'd be cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um and I can well, draw from my own experience as well. Yeah. Yeah, you totally yeah. should. Yeah. That would be awesome. That would be so awesome. Well, Alan, that is awesome. My my accent is not necessarily from Kentucky, if you're referencing me. I'm West Virginian. Uh, Kentuckians think I have an accent. Uh, <laughs> so. Oh, cool. Joe Jackson, that's awesome. Alan, uh, yeah. love John Popper on harp. What was that song, Pax? Yeah, Hook. That was, that was oh, Hook. Oh, you talking oh, about Blues hook. Traveler. Oh, yeah, yeah, Blues Traveler. It's called Hook. Yeah. 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 Uh, the, I, the, the, the lyrics of Hook are brilliant. I love the lyrics in Hook. Yeah, and Run Around is the other one on the album. Run Around is their huge it. popular one. Yeah, yeah everybody yeah, yeah, knows yeah. Run Around. Definitely. Yeah, Run Around. I, I think about four of their albums actually. Uh, so, mm -hmm. are you a big Blue Traveler fan? Mm, no, I wouldn't say. So. I wouldn't say that. Um, I, I know a few of their songs. Hook is my favorite by, by Blue Traveler, just because it's very clever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When it's you listen to the lyrics, terror. it's incredibly it's incredibly clever. <laughs> That's why I like it because it's kind of like poking fun at people, and it truly does. It's truly very catchy. So, yeah, yeah. That actually, similarly, weirdly, uh, like talking about Joe Jackson again, he wrote a song called "Hit Single," and it's and it and it's like I'm a hit single. Uh, I'm a hit single. I can't remember the words, but that's a similar kind of idea that you know uh, yeah. the char characteristics of a hit single is that you know instant sing along all that sort of stuff. You know. Right. Uh, so, yeah. Right. No, I, I love stuff. Hook. That one line where he was like, I'm being insincere. Oh, it's just so funny to me. Every time. It gets me every time. I know yeah. that song for yeah. pages. William, yeah. you weren't right. Accents don't matter. At least, yeah. uh, at least unless I'm saying certain words like line or elevator. Uh, kidding. I'm just joking. <laughs> uh, two of my favorite friends. It's David Wiley. The, hey, the, David. The person who inspired the entirety of Dead Poets here with us tonight. If it wasn't for oh. David doing March of the Poems this past year, I might not have ever even been here. Fantastic. <laughs> well, okay, <laughs> like I said, I had a reason for asking you about music. And this is going way back. You have a poem by the name of Numb. Ah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Now, yeah. I'm going to ask you just to see. It was there a, is there a song at all related to this before I read it? Because there's a song it made me think of. Um. No. Okay. Have you ever heard the U2 <laughs> song, Numb? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It made me think. Yeah. I heard, I read this in that Edge voice. Like, uh, don't okay. Eat, don't sleep. Don't da, 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 that, that like very monotonous <laughs> tone of that song. Okay. When I was reading this, I heard it in that voice. Right. I don't, and I was that like, works. I've got to ask works. him if he was like inspired by Numb. <laughs> I think I think I, wrote, I think when I wrote it, I was just really tired. <laughs> no, that's okay. That's okay. I wanted to. I like it. I I really do. I really do. I like the like. I don't want to call it repetition. You know, if I'm going to do these streams, I really need to get better with like this terminology. <laughs> um, you would think yeah, I would by now, but you know, who cares, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, guys, so listen to this. This is called Numb, and see if it hits you all the same way it hit me. Unwavering, unfiltered unmoved, unbuttoned, unwound, unflitching, untied, unbound, unmasked, undone. That's it. I love it. I love that. <laughs> I love the simplicity of it. The un, 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 un. Oh, it, it's so good. I don't know why. I don't know why. And the title is perfect. Numb, unwavering, unfiltered. I love that. I like the simplicity of it. There's To me, that's a really good example of how poems don't have to be like flowery, you know? Mm, I don't know. 
I just I really like yeah. that. Guys, chime in. Thank tell you. me what you think. So I mean, I I think I I, I enjoy playing with language. I guess that, that it was about using that um, prefix, if you like, yeah. if that's the right word for it. It is. Um, yeah. Yeah, and and just playing with that, I guess, and wanting to say the same, so be consistent. But using different ways of saying the same thing, I guess. So yeah, yeah, essentially, yeah. Well, there's there's an element of I don't want to say sadness, but numb is a good name for it. You know, like there's an element of like God, non emotion, unemotion, maybe. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah. You you end up being quite cold if you've been through mm -hmm. enough and and you just shut down. I think that's right. that's right. kind of what exactly. numb is, isn't it? Exactly. And last I wrote that. I know I wrote that during last year, like early part of last year, when I was having a tough time. So I know, I know, I just kind of switched off a bit. So, so yeah, that's kind of what that is. I like that. I, I thought it was really good. And I mean, it's honestly one of the lighter of the poems in here. I think. <laughs> um, I didn't mean to pull out the light ones because you know we don't do that here on Dead Poets. Uh, <laughs> All right. Oh, bye, Em. I know it's dinner time over here. It's ten o'clock at night in the UK. I didn't choose this time. <laughs> Gareth did. So all you UK Sorry. people, we blame him. All right. <laughs> this segment was the best thing to ever happen to Marl. Oh, thank you, David. That's nice of you to say. Yeah, it really oh, wow. was. Like, I just, I, I really thought it was cool that you did March of the Poems, and look what happened. <laughs> this is what happens when squirrels get a hold of something. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I've got a lot of poetry and music on my playlist. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Nim says, love it. See, I knew you would appreciate it, Nim. I knew you would appreciate yeah. it. Thank it you. Thank good. you. It is good, bad. I did. Let's see. Did you ever get Stephen Dobbins Cemetery? I've, I, that is on my wish list. It's on my wish list, Alan. Cemetery Nights, yes. It is on my wish list. I have so many books on my wish list. It's insane. Uh, if I ever hit the lottery, maybe I'll get some of those off the Amazon wish list. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's see. Let's do what was another one that I really because I pulled out. How many did I pull out? Four. I pulled out four that I went. Oh, yes. Let's do this one. Okay. So uh, I don't know what this was. I don't know why you guys you guys know I, I, I find things and run with it. Um, Tell me what you guys think get from this. I don't hardly even want to say anything. I want to see what they think. It's Warm Walls, Gareth. It's the one Warm okay. Walls. So, I, okay, do you have any background for Warm Walls before I read this? Well, it might spoil it. might be I my say, favorite in this, whole, in this whole book. It might be oh, my favorite. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. That's that's the poem that did feature in another book before. So, I, so it was an anthology of poems, but I can't tell you what that anthology's theme was because it'll spoil what it's about. But I'm interested to know what you thought it was about. And See, uh, well, I'll tell you afterwards. It's okay. I, I almost I almost got like like almost like an insanity thing from it, like tapping on warm walls, like you're crazy, you know, like <laughs> someone in an insane asylum tapping That's on warm amazing. walls. You can't imagine why I like this one, Gareth, right? Um Yeah. But yeah, it, it's just something about, and also, also the walls being warm. Because I was sitting there going, "Why the hell are they warm?" But it makes sense. It why does it make sense? I don't know. But I liked it. I liked it. Like the fact that the walls were warm. Like why are they warm? I I don't know. Let let me just read this before I start rambling. All right. So this is warm walls. That impenetrable reasoning. That polite private sneer. That crazy sense of wonder seeping out from the walls, the tower above the nuisance of debate, and I watch as the seclusion eats away at the soul, helpless as I tap on warm walls. That sense of community, that tourniquet embrace, oh. that crazy sense of wonder seeping out from the walls, that tower above our fragile hearts and minds, and I watch as the seclusion eats away at the soul, helpless as I tap on warm walls. That line, right there, oh, God, that tourniquet embrace. Mm. <laughs> Love it. So now, what was it about? Well, I feel like I'm going to spoil it now, because, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you think it's about insanity? And I kind of, I kind of got like an, that was the vision that, well, I mean, Gareth, I, come on, is it really that hard to believe that I had envisioned crazy people? <laughs> I mean, well, it's, it's my, okay, you're going <laughs> to, well, I feel like I'm going to reduce it to such a simple thing now. 
It's but, okay. Um, I'll still think it's about time, crazy people. Next time, well, <laughs> it's about uh, religion. <laughs> oh, no, I kind of like that even better. <laughs> Wait, the tourniquet and brace. Oh, that makes it so much better. Okay, hold on. The sense of community, the tourniquet and brace. Oh, Gareth, my frontal lobe just like blew off. I love it. All right. No, that's great. Sense of wonder seeping out from the walls. It all makes sense now. All right, stream's over. Bye. <laughs> oh, it all makes sense now, Gareth. I love it. No, yeah, so a polite private sneer. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, we, we got him. Okay, continue. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm glad. I, I'm glad I didn't spoil it um, because no. you know. Like, oh. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was. It was featured. There was um, three poems that were featured in an anthology that my friend made. That he said he basically said, "Can I use one of your lyrics?" Um, so it's a, it's a song I wrote called "People Live On," which is my take on um, death, if you like, which is that. Um, we, you know, we, we, if we make a difference, that's how we live on. We live on in how we make a difference in our community and, and with our friends and family and all that sort of stuff. That's how we live on. You know, so that's, that's my take on it. So that's what that song's about. And it's, um, it's a really popular song. It's been used for, for, it's been used a lot for different funerals as well. I've had emails from people saying, can I use that for, you know? So he asked me if he could use people live on for this anthology. And I said, yeah. Can I send you a couple of poems to see if you like them? Um, because I hadn't put any poems anywhere at the time, and I knew, and I, and I knew that nobody really knew that I wrote poetry. And I said, you know, don't worry about it if you don't like them. I'm just very honoured that you want to put in people on, but can I send you to, send you them anyway? And he said, yeah, send them anyway, and uh, he included them all. So the two that I sent him and oh, wow. people live on were included, and Warm Walls was one of them. So. Um, I, I think the other, oh yeah, the other one was from the inside, which is also in the book, I think. Um, from the inside, yeah. Um, that that's no. a song as well. I, I turned that into a song. Okay, cool. No, I wrote that the song not one I pulled son. out, but I do remember that. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So we that that was. Uh, I wanted to turn. I, I wanted to do something with it. Um, and we were, and I was just sort of messing around, like jamming with my son, and he came up with this um, guitar, like guitar part, and I said, "Oh, hold on, I'm, I think I might have something for that." And then started singing that poem to those to that music, and then oh, it kind of went from there. And then we wrote, and I wrote a chorus and all that sort of stuff. So, so yeah, it was it was quite cool uh, the way that from the inside turned into a song. That um, is so, awesome. Well, and how, yeah. what an honor to have people want to have that at their funeral. That is such an honor. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, it really is. And 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 it's weird because one of the people that's followed. Uh, Bemis a lot, like the most probably been to, yeah, well, one of the people have been to the most gigs. Um, it's so, so weird when he comes up to me and says, Oh, you know, and he's in his 70s, and he'll say, Oh, yeah, when I go, I want people to live on played at my funeral. And I'm just thinking, Oh my god, that's just too, too much because he's yeah, a friend, basically, a you know, and, and it's that, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. So, it's still, though, it's still, yeah. still such an honor to have somebody's like final hurrah, yeah. I guess, go out to, to yeah. your words and your music. That's quite, yeah, a, really quite amazing. Yeah, I got. Yeah. I, I don't even know if I can continue now, Gareth. Like you just blew my frontal lobe off. Like that's, <laughs> it's insane. Like that's, it's kind of, it's kind of crazy. I, I, I like it. I, I really do. I love it when that happens. Well, that's let's cool. see. Let's see who else here. Oh, Frosty's here. Hey. Oh, Mason's here. Oh, oh Mason, you, YouTube sucks. Oh, awesome. I didn't tell you. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Oh, Alan says, keep asking Gareth to collaborate. <laughs> yeah, I'll send you something. I will send you something. Yeah, definitely. Well, that'd be cool. Uh, yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. Celeste is here. Hello, Celeste. What time is it where you are? Okay. It's got to be late. Celeste is in France. Oh, uh, okay. See. Warm Walls is getting the Pax Passion burning. <laughs> 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 you are correct, Mason. Let's see. Just in time to find out what it is is about walls being warm. <laughs> Celeste came in at the wrong time. I'm sorry, Celeste. Um, I was probably waxing philosophical about why I liked warm walls. Uh, and then Gareth blew my frontal lobe off when he told me what it was actually about. Uh, tourniquet and brace. Love it. Yes. Isn't that cool, Mason? I love that. Just that, um, I don't know, visual, I guess. Play on words. Yes. Yeah. I love it, too. 
Warm walls had me feeling like I was going crazy. See, see, Nim, that's what I got. Like, I was envisioning, like, like tapping on warm walls, you know? Like, a crazy person. That's what first, which, I mean, truth be told, you know, the two things aren't terribly exclusive. Uh, <laughs> the rats yeah, in I'm the not, wall of, yeah. is it supposed to be the rats in the walls? Lovecraft. Ah, uh, okay. All right. I see. I don't know yeah. that one. That's cool. Yeah, that is Rolling a story, isn't done. it? Oh, oh my God. Is that in relation <laughs> to the warm walls, Celeste? <laughs> I'm sorry if it is. I, you really did come in on like me probably like flipping out over warm walls. I'm really sorry. Uh, I never would have guessed religion either, Nim. I know. I know. Isn't that crazy? Uh, oh, saying hello to everyone. It's funny, actually, because one of the things as well, we talked about the difference between lyrics and songs. Mm -hmm. Sorry, lyrics and poems. Right. And I always, and I've always said, if my lyrics for my songs were misunderstood, then I'd done a bad job with the song. But if my poems had different interpretations, I don't think I'd mind. Well, you see, I just proved your point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're but welcome. I don't think it's the same. <laughs> yeah, um, it's it's weird. I think it's because songs and and music is, you know, can be such a, um, and I get th this is true for poetry as well, but. But for my own, I guess because I'm out there doing it, um, my songs, if I am, if I've written a political song and then the opposite meaning is, is somehow interpreted, then that would be shocking to me. So right. if I'm trying to say something, then I'd want that to be said. Right. Whereas with the poems, you know, the poems are deliberately obtuse sometimes, you know. Um, so give so, the reader like what they glean from it. Yeah, I think yeah. That's a good, um, I think that's a mark of a good poem. So they can that the reader can glean what they need or what they want or what they feel from it. Yeah, yeah no, I think that's yeah. good. I think that's really good, actually. I think that's a mark of like high writing, honestly. <laughs> Let's see. I can't imagine writing something that touched people so much they wanted it at their funeral. One of the highest honors I could think of. Agreed, Mason. Agreed. Absolutely. No, it really is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, oh, MP, I wrote a poem that was read at someone's funeral. I was absolutely honored that the family wanted to include it. See, yeah, that is, that's amazing. That is really yeah. cool. Yeah, and MP's poems are fantastic. Oh, yeah. they are. His Yeah, his book yeah. is awesome. Uh, yeah. It's 11.27 p.m., so you're about what Gareth is, or cl close to, about an yeah. hour behind. Yeah, about an hour, uh, hour ahead, yeah, yeah, yeah. so. Um, oh, what did I yeah. miss? Just just me freaking out, Celeste. It's nothing. <laughs> uh, Greg and I are going live tonight on his channel. Oh, cool. That's awesome. Oh, brilliant. Um, Let's see. <laughs> Nathan, they were looking for my poetry, got us confused again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. All right. I got here exactly right before you started reading the poem. Oh, good. Good. So, okay. You only missed half of it. 2 a.m. Gareth time. Oh, look, Gareth, you're your own time zone now. <laughs> <laughs> That's the power uh, in my hand. Let's see. He says, that, look, next to it, we got Mason and MP, like, going back and forth now. <laughs> yeah. That's cool, eh? Reminds me how, vi the poem reminds me of how vision impaired people use their hands to feel around. Oh, wow. I, yeah, I get because the, the, the feeling on the warm walls, I can see, yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's, there are songs that are deliberately vague. I bet you think this song is about you. William, I yeah. sing it. Nobody wants to hear me sing. Don't say that. <laughs> um, I was, that that's, that's literally being uh, been um, rehearsed and performed by um, some of my students at the moment. And uh, and I talked about the fact that uh, yeah, there's this big mystery about who it's about. And one of the students did do some research and said, oh, isn't it uh, that every verse is about someone different? And that is what Kylie Simon said, isn't it, as a oh, response? I didn't know it was yeah, about she, someone different on every verse. That's yeah, cool. Yeah. You know, the only song that jumps to mind that I know anything about, like, who it was written for was that um, – and it was because it was so shocking to me when I found out. It was that Alanis Morissette song, You Ought to Know, I yeah. think. And she wrote it about the dude from Full House. Oh, like really? The guy that play, yeah, not not the, um. oh, crap, what was his name? Uncle Joey, the guy who played Uncle Joey. Comment oh, section. Okay. Guys, comment if you know. I suck at actors. Um, The guy who played <laughs> Uncle Joey, and he's like, just not what you would think would be dating Atlantis Morissette. Let's put it that way. <laughs> because the only point of reference I have is him on that show. So I'm thinking like Uncle Joey and Atlantis Morissette, and it just didn't click in my teenage brain. And I've never forgotten that because it was yeah. on top of video on VH1 100,000 years ago. 
It's a great song as well. It is um, a good song, though. But, but you just yeah. reminded me as well that and talking about celebrities being sung about, you've got um, a great example with Toto's Rosanna, which is about Rosanna Arquette, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know yeah. that song. Yeah. When I was yeah. a kid, my mom had the record. I don't remember what it was called. It was a red record of Toto. And yeah. I, remember, I loved it. It was my first time I ever heard. Is it African drums? The ones that they is wear around Af- their neck? Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. Okay, and they play it, with yeah. like the big sticks. Yeah. <laughs> they play the drums <laughs> with the big sticks, Gareth. <laughs> Because you always play drums with sticks. Um, anyway, Toto's <laughs> Africa was the first time I had ever heard African drums. And I remember right. being a little girl thinking they were the prettiest things I'd ever heard. So I would love to, I loved hearing Toto's Africa because of the African yeah. drums in that song. Oh, it's classic. I Absolutely classic. I think the album's called just Toto 3, I think, or Toto Is 4. It? I just remember yeah, it was right. red. My mom had a bunch yeah, yeah. of vinyl and it, I remember Toto's was red because I would always ask her to play that drum song. And Rosanna, of course, would play too because it was on on that. Gareth yeah, Meridian yeah. time, Mason. Mason, yeah, Meridian time. don't you dare. Mason says you're dead wrong. We all want to hear you sing. If you don't say Dingbat in your next live stream, Mason, we're going to have words. Um, I'm up for you singing, Pax, if you want to sing. I'm not singing. There's not enough <laughs> money in the world. I'm not singing. <laughs> Carly Simon's song, You're So Vain, is about Mick Jagger. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if she's admitted that. I think she said that's one of the people it's about, I think. Um, oh, wow. But, I did yeah, not know yeah. that. Uh, I knew but... this was going to be a learning experience. I knew <laughs> uh, David Coulet, that's it. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, <laughs> David Coulet. Yeah, that's who the Alanis Morissette song is about. Thank you, Adam. I knew somebody in my, my thing would know. Thank you. Sometimes you play drums with brushes. I guess the brushes are sticks, though, so your point stands. <laughs> well, sometimes you use your hands. So African drums are usually played with your hands. Yeah, but see, what I mean is, like, the stick, they look like they have big marshmallows on the end. Like, that's the kind yeah, of yeah. thing they play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, so technical, mean. Gareth. Like, oh, my God, I can't even <laughs> believe you should. They're, they're, called, they're called beaters. Ah, okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah. The, the sticks with the big marshmallows on the end. Got it. Uh, <laughs> On my packs, throwing down the gauntlet. Not sure I want to fight a horror fan. I'll get stabbed by a horny unicorn. <laughs> he means horny people. YouTube. He means horny. This. <laughs> Did you that he's talking about that book I read for Garb August, Gareth? That um unicorn. A horny unicorn. Rainbow book. Garb August. We're not going to talk okay. about that though, because there there might be children <laughs> in the audience. Um, I'm just kidding. There's no kids here. Uh, <laughs> or Warren Beatty. Yeah, yeah, Warren Beatty is another one that's been sort of said as as that song could have been about. I nearly said really? that earlier. Yeah, Warren, yeah, Warren Beatty. Yeah, yeah. Oh, cool! Yeah. Wow, there's yeah. just all kinds of stuff, all kinds of stuff. I don't know. All right, well, let, how about another poem? We're about thirty-seven minutes in. Let's see. Who? What else do I want to? Well, I already, I already read the my favorite one. Why the hell did I do that? I should have saved that for the <laughs> end. Have I learned nothing being a YouTuber? Uh, <laughs> Let's see. How about? Oh, let's do "It Pulls You Under." I like that one. Oh, that's another happy like one. one. <laughs> well, we don't do happy on my channel, Garrett. <laughs> we do bloody. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. So this one is called "It Pulls You Under." It pulls you under. It pulls you down. It scares off the optimists and can loose the found. It takes your breath away. It takes you out. It wins you so you can't speak or holler out. It puts you back further. It sends you back. It leaves you in tatters and permanent crack. It feeds on memory and lives on fear. It doesn't do us justice, and it's not welcome here. I love that last line. That's my favorite, and it's not welcome here. So my assumption to me, this is almost like... I feel like you could apply this to something like anxiety or depression. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of what I got from it. Like it pulling you under, taking you out, cracking your facade, all of that. Like I kind of, that's kind of what I got from that. Yeah. So any, I guess I was trying to articulate what it does, you know, and uh, different ways it cripples you. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah, I can, I could totally get that. I really, I don't know if I could really interpret that any other way except for like some sort of like mental health struggle that somebody was going through, you know, maybe not anxiety or depression per se, but like any, any fat, any form of mental health problem that somebody was having. Um, 
I really I like that though. I thought it was uh, it it's so descriptive of whatever issue you're having without being overly so, if that makes any sense at all. Like it's very simplistic and it tells you exactly what's wrong and it tells you exactly how you feel in like this much space. And I like yeah. that. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I really like that's, that. That's the beauty of poetry, really, isn't it? I think it it you know, you know, rather than telling a story with a um an eight book series that is each book is 700 pages long it's like eight lines mm -hmm. exactly you know, and, exactly and, and, uh, yeah yeah it's and quite that, dramatic honestly, <laughs> most of your poems are are very like short and readable you know I, honestly i think almost all of them are they're not none of them are something that i think somebody who was not into poetry could pick up and be like oh my god i can't handle this you know like they're all very digestible i think yeah, I think I think like maybe if you go back a bit, like nineteenth century poetry, eighteenth century poetry, that just kind of goes through one ear out the other for me. It doesn't it doesn't speak to me in the same way that more contemporary poets that are more that kind of cut to the chase, I guess. And, I, and right. that's that's kind of what kind of poetry I gravitate towards. To I suppose, right? You know, right. I mean, and yeah. I there's a time and place for the flowery stuff. Um, there's some that I love, you know, I went through a huge Shakespeare phase back in high school. Uh, so I, I have, I have a part of me loves some flowery, but by and large, you know, I've always been more towards like the more gritty. I, my favorite word to use for the type of poetry that I like is raw. Yeah. I like raw poetry. You know, I want to yeah. see your struggle, so to speak. And I want yeah. to see you put it to beautiful words. Yeah. I, to see that, the uh, dichotomy, I guess. Yeah, and well, some of the poems you read on the channel are, are really quite visceral as well, aren't they? So, yes, uh, absolutely, you know, absolutely, very, very raw. That, and that's yeah, yeah. Some of them really are, but I, I love that. I love that. Even, and I really think that I've, I've been lucky that a lot of my poetry books really span. You know, there, there's so many. I mean, I've got one from Johnny Cash back here. Come on, you know, there's Johnny Cash sitting next to Robert Frost. Probably place you never thought he'd be sitting <laughs> in the it. suite hereafter. Um, so yeah, you know, I, I, but I, I like it. You know, I like that like rawness, that realness that they, they yeah. bring to the table. Yeah, All yeah. Right. Let's um, see here. Once Wait, we've got up with the comments, I wouldn't mind write, write, reading one myself actually. If that's oh, cool. of course, yeah, yeah. Let's let's yeah. get to one. Of the, yeah, definitely. I I love it. it. When the when the actual person who wrote it reads it, it's like we hear it the way it was meant to be heard. Um, and you take out the twang. Anyway, um, on my <laughs> on my pack, starting down the gall and sure want to fight a horror fan. We've read that one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. I did some singing briefly in my Five Fingers book review. Ollie said, not quite my day job. Not to quit your day job. <laughs> well, don't worry. YouTube would probably jerk down my video if I started singing, William. Uh, I'm a self-professed man child and proud of it. That's okay, Mason. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're supposed to bait the hook, mate. Never lead with the best. Mason, I told you, I suck at this YouTube thing. It's hard to believe I've been doing it for a year. Uh, <laughs> uh, growing up is boring. Growing up is a freaking sin, Celeste. We shouldn't have done it, none of us. Uh, my Garbogus name is going to be Big Hard Brinks and Basics. <laughs> I love that people are already thinking about Garbogus. It's so funny. Uh, yeah, yeah. A political poem. I've hmm. got a political poem. I've got a few in there. Gareth, you're scaring me. You know, we don't do that here. <laughs> we don't <laughs> have like, to mention it. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, no, the stream stopped. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello, Aphrodite. Welcome. Nice to see you again. Yes, Nim, I agree. Definitely. It was so good about mental health. I loved it. I loved it. I, as soon as I read it, I was like, definitely. Oh, you think the last poem, Adam, sounded like a riddle? Yeah, kind of. Kind of. See, I almost think more malls almost sounded more riddlesque. That's not a word. Um, I feel like this poem could be so many things. First impression was the ego. <gasps> oh, yeah. oh, hold on. Pulls you under, pulls you down. Scares off the optimist. Yeah, I can kind of see it, Celeste, in the, in the light of reading it again. Yeah, that's cool. And I can uh, see why it sounded a bit like a riddle as well, actually. Yeah, no, I could see it because it's like it pulls you under. It pulls you. It never gives you yeah. the thing. Yeah. I feel you on that one, Gareth. That's why my poetry is so simplistic. Yeah. That's cool. 
Well, I mean, that's but cool. I think that's wonderful to take these. It's going back to that like whole like dichotomy, I guess. When you take these emotions that are so powerful and so complex and so like terrible in a lot of ways, uh, and you put them out in such a simplistic way, it lets people see that you know we all share this cesspool of crap sometimes uh and and it's okay to talk about it with each other you know like i i, I don't know that's kind of what i maybe that's my pipe dream for poetry but yeah it is emotional absolutely oh hey hey mj thank you for popping in oh wow <laughs> thank Hi, MJ. you mj uh everyone say hello to mj Oh, God, Mason. Johnny Cash and Robert Frost walk into a bar. What's the punchline? Probably, <laughs> hey, Mason, maybe they were looking for little John Cena. If y'all guys didn't watch his last um, live stream, I was in Stitches when he was he was answering these 50 question the 50 question tag, and he was talking about what he would name his son, and he said he would name his son John Cena, and started talking about calling him little John Cena for tea, and I was dying laughing, <laughs> thinking about John Cena drinking tea. It was... <laughs> That was that was that was a great live stream, Mason. Uh, let's see, raw poetry, Johnny Cash poems. Please show that book packs. Oh, okay. Hold on. Let's see. Right here, Johnny Cash Forever Words. Yep, and I have a bookmark in here. Why do I have a bookmark in here? And it's in, reading it. it's in a poem called "Dark and Bloody Ground." Show of hands. <laughs> Who's shocked? No one. <laughs> I didn't think so. All right. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, that is uh, John Keats is effing raw. John Keats is effing raw. Um, <laughs> John Keats is effing raw. I don't know why that tickled me, Alan. Um, yeah. So, I found this on um, Jeremy Fee. Jeremy Fee had shown this in a video, and it was like 4.30 in the morning. I had had a no-show of a student and was watching Jeremy's video, and this popped up on the screen, and I was like, Amazon.com, sent. <laughs> 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 yeah, because I, I had to have it. Uh, let's see. Sam, my only type of poem is passion-provoking. Absolutely. That's the best kind. Anything that provokes passion is, is I'm on board for, Aphrodite. Uh, yeah. Agree, Alan. Keats is dark. Keats is dark. I actually need mm -hmm. to get some Keats. I don't think I have any. Not even in my classics book. Y'all like it? It's professional. Y'all like my back? No. <laughs> 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 All right. So raising any emotion with words is powerful. Absolutely. MP, love the romantic Shelley at all. Let's see. Yeah. God, we've got. I love it when y'all talk this much in comments. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> it could be a serious topic, but don't you think it could also work for that feeling you get when you've eaten far too much, Mason? That's not serious. <laughs> <laughs> that's not serious, Mason. It's late. He's bringing Christmas already. It's not Christmas yet. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Little John Cena isn't a big drinker, Mason. I can't read your comments anymore. I'm skipping over them. I'm going to start crying. <laughs> Oh, of course. Answer to Johnny Cash and Robert Frost walk into a bar. Some say the world will end in a ring of fire. Adam, you're, you're banned. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fee, I'm a reader of you, His Electric Dreams. Yes, yes. I need to get Fee on here, too, because his, his book is... Have you read his book, Gareth? His no, Electric I haven't. No. no, I need to, uh, um, need to get it. Yeah, Electric Nightmares. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, you know, you know, he's a teacher too. Cool. Yeah, cause look, yeah, yeah. look at that. You're, you'll appreciate this. Hold on. Teacher poetry, Gareth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I opened this answer. up and I was like, oh crap. <laughs> <laughs> An antidote. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, my favorite kind of poem is the kind when I read it, it throws me into a deep and brutal existential crisis. That's why we're friends, Celeste. That's why we're friends because we we, we search after such feelings. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Aphrodite says Adam wins the internet. Y'all are killing me. Y'all got to stop. <laughs> we're an eyeliner, people. Can't make me laugh and cry. All right. Anthony, v Johnny Cash, and Robert Frost. After many drinks, they try to go home. Gareth, look what we've done. Look what we've done. <laughs> and after many drinks, they try to go home, walking the line in the road, but being fulsome drunk. Fulsome uh, drunk. Oh, my God, Anthony. Their paths diverged in a wood. 
<laughs> Gareth, this is I'm your task now, Gareth. You you have to write this story. Johnny okay. Cash and Robert Frost walk into a bar. Meet in a bar. <laughs> Electric night. That's okay. That's okay, Alan. We got you. All right. If y'all don't stop in the comments, I'm already almost crying <laughs> laughing. Y'all are hilarious. All right. So, Gareth, feel free. Go ahead. What were you wanting to read for us? Um, okay. So, I'll, I'll read them. Um, I'll, I'll tell you what. You might find this amusing because I do, I do think it's quite funny. So, okay. this is the book. This is the book, right? So, this is how you retrieve yeah. it if you bought it. But because it's self-published and it's our job when we self-publish to figure out formats, yeah, right. I, I cocked it up. <laughs> so, um, so I have a huge version, which I was like, "Oh, bollocks!" <laughs> I, I, I didn't want one that big. Uh, so, so because I've got old eyes, I'm going to use this huge version that is like bigger than the house. Gareth, please tell me that that came in the mail and you opened it. And we're like, "Oh God!" <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, "Ah." Uh... Oh, oh my god, great. that is the funniest thing ever. Thank you, Gareth. I appreciate that. Oh my yes, god. Massive. <laughs> so so there you go. If you want to see the cover in like um oh the cover's done by my daughter as well, by the way. Oh really? Cool. Oh that's awesome. Yeah. Well, I, I love this, yeah. that. That is really cool. That's cool, isn't it? I asked her if well, originally, um I don't know if she's watching, but originally um she was supposed to do loads of illustrations for the whole thing. And in the end I went like you're really busy, Jess. Just give me a cover. <laughs> right. Well, I've heard yeah, it's so. hard to format stuff too, like illustrations when you self-publish. I've heard it's hard to format, like when you go to put it in the actual yeah. book. So that yeah, might yeah, have a lot of headache too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's hard <laughs> enough to do it with text. Yeah, um, clearly, um, because I've got this enormous version. Um, I just anyway. have this visual of you opening it up, like, damn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like. No, that is so you something know. I would have done. That is so something and I, I would have done, Gareth. Because I'm really impatient as well. I didn't just get one kind of uh, example copy for me to be happy with. I bought about five, so it was like, oh, great! I got five enormous <laughs> copies, but I'm never going to do anything with them. Uh, so that yeah, was really that was really clever. That, that's um, hilarious. I love that. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so I'm going to read a a story. A, 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 sorry, a poem that I think. I mean, there's some really heavy stuff that I can't actually read. So there was one, probably the heaviest one. I don't know if you were one of the ones that you've highlighted. But what, the heaviest one, I think, is the one called Duty of Care. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I know that one. Mm -hmm. I'm not reading that. Um, and there's a couple of others that I can't read. But this one is one that's about, you know, that idea that you know that you can be your worst enemy and you can, you know, that sort of self-doubt or the idea that you're going to be, you're going you're gonna to be, um, the person that brings yourself down. Yeah, you're right? going to be the orchestrator of your own demise. Yeah. yeah. So this. I thought about it on occasion. Yeah. <laughs> I think we all do. Yeah. Um, but this is this poem's kind of saying it's not possible that you'll you'll yeah. be fine. All right. Okay. So it's kind of like a it's a it's a pick me up poem, but it's also wrapped up in complex. Uh, Doubt as well. <laughs> hey, hey, no, that's okay. We're yeah. all about the complex doubt here. Go for it. Yeah, so, um, so then I'll read this enormous version. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do that and then read like serious crap, Gareth. You can't do that. I should, because it's so big, I should shout it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, so this is called You're Not Capable. And it's deliberately called You're Not Capable because obviously that sounds like it's an insult. Of course. But the end of each line at the beginning is not that. So okay. you're, you're not capable of being the beast you fear. You're not capable of taking down everything you are. You're not capable of putting a stop to your pleasures. You're not capable of filling your days with re regret. You're not capable of living face down in the past. You're not capable of moving away from what works. You're not capable of letting everything, I mean everything, go. And you're not capable of losing the life you prize. But watch yourself and listen. Keep yourself in check. Value what you value in case you're wrong. Wow. That is a pick-me-up, Gareth. It really is. That is a pick-me-up. What a positive, positive poem. I like that. Positivity wrapped in, like, a sheet of negative 
like you, know, you <laughs> yeah. see through it, you know. It's, it's, it's positive, like it. but it's also <laughs> yeah. No, you could see yeah. through. You could see through the negative into the the light at the end of the tunnel. Let's say, yeah. No, yeah. I like that. I think that's really pretty. Absolutely. Thanks. And I'm so glad you read that. See, see, it's so it's so nice. It's so nice when you uh, read that. I don't read it as well as you. You read poetry beautifully, so it's not oh. that's, that's not as. I appreciate quite, that. Like, I appreciate that. I really thing. do. Let's see. Let's see. How about there was another one? Let's see. Sixty-five. Uh, okay, here we go. Everything about you. This is actually oh. even longer ones. <laughs> okay. What? What was that reaction, Gareth? Because <laughs> you're going to ask me what it's about. I am going to ask you what it's about. You don't have okay. to say. You know, you don't have to no, say. No, no, no. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what it's about. I'll tell you what it's about. Not now, though. When you've read it. No, oh, okay. All right. Cool. Well, let's let's do it then. All right. So, everything about you. Mm. Everything about you. Everything I have been told is filled with malice, driven by distrust, laced in disappointment and regret. Everything about you. Everything I have heard changes like Chinese whispers. Changes like a rumor in the wind, laced with whimsy and flippant demands. Everything about you. Everything I have read was written by us. An artist's portrait of capricious defect with rules that can't last in a worldview and a worldview inevitable and fit for the fire. Everything about you, everything that I know, is distant and objective, voiced by others, felt by the inarticulate, who are forced to rely on cyclical words and cyclical thoughts, cyclical words that validate nothing, prove the unfeasible, and lead the lucky elite. Okay? Okay. Enlighten us, Gareth. Um, that's literally me talking to God. <sighs> okay. <laughs> All right. Really, really interesting. So, everything I've been told, you have a lot, of, if I may say, Gareth, so far this is the second one that religion has came up in. Does that influence a lot of your poetry? Um, it, I think it could be a fluke. But there are definitely a few in the book. I mean, it might be just one of those things that you've honed in on Can a couple there. Towards it? But, <laughs> but I but I have written about. I mean, I've I've written a few songs about it. It's I've known a lot of religious people that have been really close friends, and I have got a bit of a background. When I was a kid, I was kind of, uh, I was kind of, um, what's the word? Um, I became part of this kind of. I don't know what it is really like a. a <laughs> like a culty thing, I don't know, but like an evangelist kind of thing. But, but then no I, once I got Gareth. to, but when no I got judgment. to about, eh? No judgment, Gareth. You could say whatever. Well, when, well, when I got, well, I'm just trying to describe it because it wasn't. Because to be to be honest, I've also kind of, um, it, it's a really distant part of my memory because when I got to about I don't know 13 or something, um, I was like, hold on a minute, this is utter bollocks, uh, and uh, and. <laughs> <laughs> Just sort of complete nonsense. So, uh, but some of those people are still close friends, and like one of my oldest friends comes from that period, and I love her to pieces. But I know she's got a very strong faith, and uh, we don't see eye to eye on any of that. But um, you yeah, know, she's a beautiful person, and uh, I, you know, I, I know that there's a lot of good that comes from it. Um, I mean, one of one of the, there's a there's a guy. Don't want to have a massive conversation about religion, but there's a guy that I, um, one of the people I've admired the most in my life, who died about a year ago. Um, he was an amazing man, and he spent half of his year uh, basically gathering money through this um, um, retail thing he had, um, sort of like hippie stuff. And then the other half of the year, he went to three different countries and worked with street kids, just basically looking after them and feeding them oh, wow. and that kind of thing. And he did all of that. He did it every year. That was what his life was. He did it every year for decades. And it was just because of his faith. And I think that is an amazing thing. And that's something that, um, you know, that's definitely something that his belief in God gave him. So you can't take that away from the fact that, you know, on the other side of it, none of it makes any sense. <laughs> um, but, you know, <laughs> but that man, and there are other examples of that, you know that man was a, an incredible man that did great things, and right. he was motivated. He was motivated by that. So I do think, you know, that it's a very complex issue. But for me, it is. Um, you know, when I when I when I wrote that about 
we're literally talking to God. So when I say what I've heard about you, what I know about you, what um, whatever the other verses are, but it's that it's it's read. about me saying what how well my take. I try to try kind of encapsulate my take on it in a way that uh, I felt was complete. Um, so you know, like no, there's I think a you there's succeeded. A, you succeeded. Yeah. There's a there's a band called X. Do you know the band XTC? XTC. I don't think so. They're another '80s band. <laughs> they're a new wave band. Uh, they're XTC. I think I have to see if there's any comments about this. XTC are probably. Um, I hesitate to say it, but probably my favorite band. So okay. it's kind of like the three big ones. There's XTC, Oingo Boingo, and Midnight Oil. I know Oingo Boingo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oingo, there we go. So you, you probably love Danny Elfman, right? <laughs> well, I I know of him. Yes. Right. Okay. I was yeah, I wasn't someone... born until the middle of the '80s, so it, it's yeah. kind of it's kind of a blur. Uh, you know, yeah, I, yeah, I was still in diapers for most of the '80s. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, XTC. Um, I've had, I've had, there's lots of parallels actually between XTC and Boingo, but XTC kind of like just go above everything else in a lot of ways. But but the main songwriter in the band was Andy Partridge, and uh, he wrote a song called Dear God, which was a big hit in America. Uh, weirdly, because you'd think that was most possibly a bit controversial, but um, but Dear God was taken off the album in this country, and then it was put onto the album later because it had a big hit in America. And the, uh, he always said he he felt like he'd not done what he set out to do, and that was to to put down all his feelings about religion and God and the afterlife and all that sort of stuff in this song. It's an incredible song. It's an absolutely amazing song, and I think he he does an amazing job. But he doesn't like it because he thinks he didn't say he didn't enough succeed. or he didn't say it right. Yeah. Interesting. And that's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. So I so that poem was one of the last ones I put in the book. And it was my I really wanted to try and say everything that I wanted to say to him. Capital letters. Oh no, I think yeah. Oh, I I think you succeeded. I would have not guessed that had you said it. But now that you said it's talking to God, I can see that. Everything I've read about you, everything I've heard about you, yeah, because that's the only way you hear about him or you know find out about God is you read yeah. or you hear or whatever. So, so I think it's funny that I picked out two of your religious poems. I swear to God, <laughs> you guys watching, we didn't plan that. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. That's not um, it's not really a big part of the book. Um, it's just a big. It's just a big thing for me. You guys know I love those like big you know, bake your noodle questions. Those are some of my favorite things in the whole world to talk about. When you find people that you can talk the big stuff about, you know, you found your people. Let's see. Yeah. All right. Let's catch up. Cause they are talking up a storm. I swear to God, if I start into these comments and you guys are talking about Johnny cash, I'm going <laughs> to, uh, let's see. Oh, so let's just Anthony read too many of the poems. Uh, tell the rest <laughs> guys. Oh God, Adam! He needs to read it in an oversized chair. <laughs> really, Adam? Yeah. Really? That'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. <laughs> I'd look tiny. I'd look really tiny, wouldn't I? Be oh awesome. God, Mason! Gareth formatting a book that even I could read. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send you a copy. <laughs> oh God, Mason! <laughs> Celeste's help. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is a very nice cover, though, Alan. I agree. Uh, just donate them to the RNIB and tell them they're large print versions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, Al. Yes, yeah, uh, yeah. Everybody, uh, you know, y'all, y'all, head on over and look at Al at Allen's. Even those of you in the UK, it'll be two o'clock in the morning. But I'm sure some of you will still be up. <laughs> uh, some parental wisdom, right there, buddy. Yeah, We're, he's a lot of wisdom so far in this stream. We're going to pass the collection plate. If I have one more poem that I pick that's religious, we're going to pass the collection plate. If you need glasses for the big book, we'll be needing a telescope for the regular size book. Uh, let's see. The book is so big, I should shout it. Gareth's going to overcompensate with his next book, and it'll be borrower size. I know the borrowers. I know that. I've seen that. Uh, it was a movie, I think. The little people that lived in that person's house. There was like a little family. Can I say I've, t I've kind of done that because I made a hardcover version of the Brown Yelp Gang, uh -huh. and uh, and I, and I when I received it, I looked at it, and uh, the um, the text is really faint, <laughs> so I was like, oh my god, oops. <laughs> so so yeah, I, 
<laughs> Oops. So an adventure. I was mentioned borrowers. I, I've I've not thought about the borrowers in forever. So that's that's really funny. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful pick me up. It was. It was. Malice is one of my favorite words. See, Mason, you you masquerade as a as a fantasy booktuber. You're not. You're secretly a horror booktuber. Malice being your favorite word. Talking to God. Dang, I know me. I know him, right? <laughs> uh, if it wasn't at work, I'd be turning every kind. <laughs> If I wasn't at work, I'd be turning every time Gareth says bollocks into a drinking game. <laughs> That's one of those words that we need over here. That bollocks. and bloody. Bollocks. It's they a great word. That. They don't, yeah, they don't yeah. say that over here. We don't say bollocks. We just say like, like, oh shit. You know, that, that's nothing. Yeah. That's nothing on bollocks or bloody. We need to put bloody over here too. I like, I like that. But see, I can't say bloody because then they're like, what are you trying to pull, Pax? Yeah. Uh, it's bl it's bl bloody's quite uh english isn't it quite quite, quite yeah, british but i love it i love it though yeah, i yeah. love it it's it's so spot on in certain situations what, what i like about the word bollocks not just because it's it's so blunt and it's so like it's it is really saying something shit if it's a bollocks it's like yeah bollocks oh, yeah. So i love that but i mean I, i'll tell you what is it nim that said she's going to be drinking i think she's probably going to get pissed with me saying bollocks so much oh no but, it's mp um, mp would be drinking uh, MP he's for that. um mm -hmm. But um, what I was going to say was um, uh, what I like about it as well is it's not because I get the impression you can tell me if this is true or not, but I get the impression there's kind of two known famous accents uh, for English people is like the really posh one, hello, and really splendid, and then there's the like more common can you do one. Do that again, Gareth. <laughs> <laughs> that I think sick. I missed it. Could you do it again? <laughs> I don't know something like you know. Hello, I'm a very posh man or whatever. Uh, I can't do it very well. But but that sort of thing, it's, it seems to be two extremes. And I like the fact that no posh bloke says bollocks, as far as I know. I've never heard a posh guy say bollocks, but it seems like really real as well. I mean, you guys could tell me in the comments. I don't know if we could really... As a matter of fact, I think MP and I talked about this a little bit. I don't know if I could distinguish an English accent. You know, oh, really? Like, to, me, to me, it all sounds English. And I know MP, like, I know, I know if you He's live there, you can understand, like, this is persons from the north, this person's from here. Yeah. And I can do that here. Like, I can tell you, oh, this person's from the south, this person's from the north, you know, what have you, um, to a certain degree, to a certain degree. Um, there's some people that are more than others. I mean, I don't think my accent's that thick sometimes. I know I joke about my accent, but most of the time my accent's fine. I have met people that have a very, very, very thick southern accent. And I have met people that have a very thick northern accent. But I don't know if, like, maybe it's the same. Like, could you tell, do I have an accent to you? Yeah, I thought you were in that ballpark. So I didn't know it was a specific state, but I thought you were around that kind of the South. West Virginia, Tennessee yeah. kind of thing yeah so i so but i don't i'm not an expert so i, I don't but i didn't think it was like california or something i didn't yes, you know i, I thought you were, i'm too pale yeah, for california <laughs> <laughs> i'm like a sheet um, of paper but, gareth <laughs> so do you think me and np sound the same then yeah essentially like i think really? I, yeah I, I, like you i mean you have differences in your like actual voice voice but as far as your your accent yourself yeah i think to me it just i i just my brain registers like english you know like right. english accent like i don't know if i could tell a, a real difference because because um, there's a there's a link between the portsmouth accent and the cockney accent it kind of like there, there's apparently there's some historical thing about londoners traveling down here or something but really? there's some there's some link that it would sound a little bit cockney or whatever so it's not it's not actual cockney it's just got that sort of vibe to it that sort of rhythm to it see the um, only the only experience i have with cockney is um is it My Fair Lady? I think it's My Fair Lady. I think she speaks oh, Cockney. Oh, well, there's also um, there's there's the famous Dick Van Dyke Cockney accent, isn't there? Oh, uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, now that you say that, yes. Yeah, the yes. infamous Dick the Van Dyke infamous. accent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, but it happens a lot. It's like there, there was an episode of Fraser when um, um, there was, you know, Daphne was the um the from May, from well, Manchester. Yeah. the one that Niles yeah. loved. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Niles she loved. From Manchester and her brother came over and her brother was played by an American guy doing a English accent. Really? And like a cotton accent. It was so obvious. It was really funny. It was just really weird. Yeah, like the sound of it was like that is someone. So was Daphne doing an accent. was her accent was that Cockney? 
Like what Daphne said? No, it's, uh, she's from Manchester, so it was more like NPs ah. accent. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, All um, right. So yeah, she was. Um, she was. That's. She is a British actress, so she just you know got a bit of luck doing a big hit show in America. But um, but yeah, they they got an American guy doing a brother in some guest episode. It was just really weird. It was like, yeah. what's he doing? That, <laughs> you know? that is weird. Yeah. Like obviously yeah. everyone and every single person in the whole world that knows that accent would have been like, you're a fake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It is weird when it happens. So there are some actors that are really good at it, isn't there? Because um I know the guy, I can't remember what his name is, James something. The guy that was in Battlestar Galactica and he was in Law and Order, I think it was something like that. And he's I don't even know if he's American or British, but he's good at doing both accents. Really? And there's a few, I, yeah, I, yeah. I've seen a few law, uh, law and order SVU was the only one I ever watched like a lot of like with Marcia yeah. Margate. That was the only one I ever watched a ton of the other ones. I've only seen like sporadically. Do you watch crime stuff? Uh, not so much anymore. I don't really watch. I'm really bad with shows, Gareth. I don't really watch oh, a lot okay. of TV anymore. Um, the last thing we watched was I did watch a few episodes of um, Wednesday. Oh, wow. Because obviously I did. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, yeah, Gareth? No. <laughs> <laughs> and I haven't started that yet, but I'm, I'm, you, 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 I've mentioned the Adams family quite a lot on my channel, and Charles Adams, and I'm a huge Adams family fan. Uh, there's a there's a video going up next week actually where I talk about Charles Adams again, um, and, I, and I love the whole Adams family thing. So yeah, I really need to watch Wednesday. Is it I good? Think, I, I think she did a very good job. Yes, I think she does a very good job in it. Which I mean, I like the whole aesthetic of it, but mm. I, I really do think she did a good job. Um, the ver from the very first episode, I, I like I, I like Wednesday style. Anyway, I've always liked Wednesday style. That whole uh, yeah, I don't know, just her whole vibe. I've always liked. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I think yeah. I think you'll enjoy it. I really do. I think you'll enjoy it. They take some uh, some really fun liberties with that whole thing. Yeah, yeah, so and I've heard that Christina Ritchie's the uh, she plays a an antagonist in it. She is, like she is in it, yeah. yeah, yeah. Nice little callback yeah. to all of us old fogies that remember that one. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, let's see. William says Jimmy Carter's awesome because of his faith. Yeah, uh, dear God is one of MP's favorite songs. <laughs> awesome, that's wow. a great song. Oh, Mr. Star, Gareth, can you share your thoughts, tips on indie publishing in case any young poets are watching the live stream? Um, yeah. Um. I think um, someone said about um, whether they said they were, uh, but I did a, um, um, a, a kind of a market stall kind of thing last week. And uh, there was uh, this couple that came up that wanted some advice about whether they should do it or not and how they should do it. And I, and I said, you know, one, just keep writing and good advice. kind of push yourself to do more as you do it. So, um, the self-publishing side of it is really easy, and I don't think you should worry about where you do it, you know, because there's so many different ways of doing it. Just pick one and do it. Um, I mean, there are people that deliberately avoid Amazon because they're obviously the big giant. It's like, you know, um, working for a capitalist or whatever. But I, as anyone I knew about, and I'm I'm just still going to keep doing the KDP thing, which is the Amazon thing, just because, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, you know, I, I don't really feel bad about it. But um, there's so many ways of doing it. So I don't think there's a problem about that. And I think, I feel like, because you can control it, just put stuff out. And if you don't like it, take it back again. You know, if you want to do a new edition of it, you can do that and do a new edition of it. Um, I I discovered when I, because I've got my books here, um, both of these. Um, so, sorry. The, yeah, the, so the Unknown Beacons and the Tins Tales. tales. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Both of them have got second edition. So both of them. I've corrected just because I've noticed things in them and you can do that because you did it yourself. You self published it. And I think that's kind of a positive thing. Um, so I think you just got to do it and just run with it. And, and then the other thing was I never really thought of publishing. And then I wrote the first story in this book, mm -hmm. which is the end, the endless, the endless oh. challenge of time management. Yes. Uh, I love that, that one? one. I love the endless challenge of time management. Oh, oh my gosh. Thanks. Yes. Yeah, that one and um oh god. The Breath of Life. That was another one oh, that I liked. That those were <laughs> that's, great. that's about God. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, we're done. <laughs> um what is this? Um but yeah, the endless challenge of time management um was 
a story that I wrote when I wasn't really thinking that I was going to write as a um, as a uh, was supposed to as an activity that I was going to do a lot, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I wrote that story, and then I thought, and then other real ideas came into my head because I really liked the story, and I showed it to a few people, and they really liked it. And then other ideas came into my head, probably because the gate was opened, and it was like, ah. Oh. So once I had about six, I thought, well, maybe can then someone, a friend of mine, started talking about the self-publishing thing. And I thought, well, maybe I could make an anthology book. So, so I kind of stewed with it for a while. And then once I had about, I had about twelve or thirteen ideas. I thought, well, I'll, I won't panic. I won't kind of put a lot of pressure on myself. I'll see how it goes. See if I write these stories. And I wrote, I wrote a couple I didn't like, so I just ditched them. And then I, but the ones I felt quite pleased about, I kind of kept them. And then I showed a few people some of them. And I thought, well, um, yeah, I'll put, I'll. I'll put out a book you know and then once i did that um i i thought because th the other thing is that as the stories went on they got longer mm -hmm. so um some of them are quite short but some of them i thought I, th I tried to push myself to try and make it more of a sort of three-part plot on some of the stories so right. i think the drums of drums of the irakai has definitely got a a plot line that it, goes it beyond does. Just it does and yeah, that one. That one's definitely a journey. That might be the biggest like journey story in all of them. I feel like. Yeah, yeah, it's fifty pages long, and I wanted her to, when she escapes the ceremony, and you don't really know. I don't think you know why straight away. Do you know why straight? I can't remember. No, no, uh, no, she, no, won't tell you. no. she won't tell yeah. anybody. Yeah, yeah. So, so then she meets these people that are also n not happy about the ceremony, and I wanted it to be. Like, you know, you've got these three parts. So you've got the ceremony that kind of introduces the setting and then she meets the people and then there's some kind of finish up of the story and some sort of conclusion that um, <laughs> was a bit, I, won't, I won't spoil it, but it's not, yeah, I'm, I've been a bit cruel in this book occasionally. Um, but, um, but yeah, um, I wanted to do that and then each time I push myself and I think it's quite a good thing to do that you can kind of think, okay, I've done that let's try and make that bigger or like the next thing I do, maybe I can do that. And then obviously after that, I then tried to write a novel um, and which is the ice beacons. Um, and that was a really big uh, challenge because I wanted it to have, you know, whereas the drums of the era was, a, was an attempt to have a three part story. This was an attempt to have a 13 part story. Do you know what I mean? I thought I will need to have at least 13 or 15 chapters and something has to happen in each chapter. Otherwise, what's the point? So right. like, I wanted to move here? You wanted it to be there for a purpose. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I wanted to move it along. And once I, once I knew what I was going to say, I thought, I can do this. This is, this is going to work. And, and each time it was a progression, I felt like I'd achieved something. So, and then this, the next one, it's, it's the biggest one, but it's also probably the thing I'm most proud of because it's, it made me laugh so much, and it is. Just... It, it, yeah, I could see. I could see why, because just the story in Ten Tales made me laugh. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so I think you know, as far as advice, I just think keep pushing yourself. Understand and acknowledge when you've done something that you can be proud of, that you think you've achieved it. Right. You know, and don't worry about if someone else. You know, show it to a few people, but if, but and show it to people that would be honest as well. Um, right. and and if you can get something off that then you go okay that's because because one of the things as well about what was it it was the oh yeah it was this one so when i did write this because i was um nervous about it because it was a big step up from the short stories i um sent it to a really i spent sent the first three chapters to a really close friend of mine um jeff yeah, i don't know if he's going to watch this jeff but i love jeff to death um i asked him what he thought and he said he really enjoyed it but he felt like the there's three main characters in it. There's three main teenage boys in it. And um, there's one kind of principal character in the sense that a lot of the action revolves around him. But then there's two other characters that are kind of bullying him in school. And they get wrapped up in the story because all three of them end up on another planet. Um, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's kind of, it. yeah, there's, there's lots that happen because they end up messing around with their... Um, <laughs> they, they they end up freaking out this other planet's religion oh my god what is this thing um so that um but anyway moving on from that um 
the uh, he did say that he felt like the two other characters, the two bullies, he felt like they weren't um, uh, distinctive enough. Ah, okay. Which is really good advice because I've I said to him, that's really interesting you say that because I was trying to make them distinctive, so I felt like I needed to make more of an effort to do that. Well, so, that's why you send it to people to get feedback yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, one of them was de- I wanted one of them to definitely be dominant, and the other one was like, "What do you think? What do you? you know, I can't even remember their names. Um, what? Um, I can't remember. Lee? Lee. Oh, it might be Lee. So we'd be going like, "What do you think, Lee? You know, what should we do now, Lee? And all that sort of stuff. You know, um, sidekick, and, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Essentially, yes. Yeah. So I wanted him to be more like that, but I didn't want him to be a caricature of it either. So I, so I, I so I realised I was being too subtle. So when he said that. The, from then on, I didn't really change the first three chapters, but from then on, I thought, okay, I need to keep that in mind, and make and and actually, some things that happen to them, they do get separated at one point, and I knew that the the psychic kind of character would be terrified if he was on his own, so I kind of played with that a little bit, um, and he he what it wasn't just about being on another planet and being in um, in front of these kind of yeti things, it was being away from his mate who he trusted and felt protected by as well, so. You know, it was it was kind of like, well, let's take them to different, different places as well. So, so that advice was really useful. So, if you do write something, I'd say show it to someone you trust as well, but also be proud of it. You know, because it's it's even if someone did say it was a load of nonsense and a load of bollocks, uh, then it wouldn't matter because you <laughs> it wouldn't matter because you've still done it. You know, and you can you're going to get better each time you write. You know, I I I, I feel like. Um, well, there's a bit of a delay in my next novel. I'm writing a poetry book again, actually, at the moment. Oh, um, yay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I'll tell you about it in a minute. I really wanted to tell you. I was, I was like dying to tell you. But mm-hmm. the, the next novel I wanted to write was a sequel to um, the Brown Yelp Gang because I wanted because the next one was going to be called the Brown Yelp Gang Go to Pieces, and it was about them splitting up, and uh, and they and like the singer who's Trent who's got three heads. Yeah, he does yeah. a he does a solo project. Um, but then he, he ends up arguing with himself and it all goes wrong. And then the other guys, they they do these auditions that end up with these women singing uh, and they're sirens and they 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 end up just sort of plagiarising other songs and they get away with it because they hypnotise the court and all that sort of stuff. That was the, the general... Plus they're sirens, right? Yeah, kind yeah, of what yeah, they yeah. Do. yeah. Yeah. So that was the big joke of the plot of the next one. But i want it to be better than this one so i need to read this one again to make sure that i've got everything in place so there's no contradictions the continuity's right and all that do you know what i mean so i want to yeah, take yeah. care and i don't want to be frivolous with it but the reason but because i want it to be good i'm taking my time a little bit so i think that's another thing that i think you know if you know that there's something that could make it not quite as good or you know something you need to consider then take your time as well you know i think that's another thing i'd say absolutely but, yeah, go well, I, kinda, I like your advice about like essentially just do it just do yeah. it like get out yeah. there and do it because you know rather than agonizing over it i think that's that's a good very good advice all on so very much in the, the spirit of what i try to to do like don't don't give a shit um very much in that spirit <laughs> i like that yeah no i, well, I really like that's good advice it's so that cliche, isn't it, about people going, oh, I've been writing a book for 10 years. Oh, how much have you written? Oh, I haven't written anything yet, but I've got this book. About I've been 50 writing pages in my head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, well, let's see, Mason. So you've had one thing that was too big, one thing that was too fake. You'll get one that's just right at some point. <laughs> oh, Crystal's here. Hey, Fiber Artsy. Oh, hi, Crystal. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't masquerade as a fantasy booktuber. I'm a crime thriller. Not You are. You are, Mason. I apologize. <laughs> the one thing more British than blimey, is blimey. <laughs> I, I genuinely I mean I don't know if it's a, something that you guys might think is just a caricature but I genuinely say blimey I say cool yeah I don't go cool blimey but I do say blimey sometimes which is kind of mad no, I, I can yeah. imagine I can imagine it's blimey being a, a perfectly fine slur or whatever uh, they be used it's, just, it's, a, it's just like well I say bloody hell as well it's like an exclamation exclamation isn't it but bollocks is saying something's crap in it, which is awesome. Well, Mason says bollocks is versatile. It can be angry, disbelieving, sarcastic. Tone of voice conveys so much with, with bollocks. <laughs> One of the things, I, I might have said this before, but I do think it's funny. Um, that this is this is a really English thing. So bollocks, if something's bollocks, is crap, right? Mm-hmm. But if something, is, if something is the dog's bollocks, then it's awesome. 
Really? The dog's so we, bollocks uh, is awesome. The dog's bollocks. So we love dog's bollocks. I mean, I don't know where my dogs are. I can show you their bollocks. Um, but... That's okay, Garrett. <laughs> it's all right. Don't, don't disturb your dogs. It's all right. <laughs> But apparently the dog's bollocks is means you it's awesome. YouTube, I told him not to show the dog's bollocks. That's one of my favorite things about our um, idioms. It doesn't make any sense. It's ridiculous. But yeah, bollocks bad, dog's bollocks awesome. Remember that. <laughs> oh, remember that, I kid? I will. I will. I'll remember that. <laughs> Pax, you sound like a punky southern belle. Well, thanks, actually. That's actually quite high praise, Celeste. Thank you. Uh, do you think I sound the same as Gareth in MP, though? I mean, honestly, still, Mason, in my brain, it just registers as English. Like, you each sound different, but you sound different because you're different people. Does that make sense? Like, I, I don't yeah. think you sound different because of your accent. You sound different because of different people. Like, in my brain, you all, like, you're, if I was just to think, like, if I was to take out Gareth, take out MP, take out Mason, it's just English. You know, like... <laughs> That's a very violent afternoon. You're taking me out. You're taking me out. <laughs> and you're taking MP out. <laughs> I couldn't take out anyone if I tried. Uh, <laughs> let's see. I think me, Mason, and Garrison see who can say bloody bollocks in the poshest accent. <laughs> well, yeah, one of you needs to have a live stream and just call it the buddy, the buddy, the, the bloody, bloody bollocks. bollocks live. See, I can't even say. I can't even say the word. Um, um, come on, governor. Paul Jill, My Fair Lady is one of my favorite musicals. Okay, wait a minute. Come on, Governor is about the only one I got. Come on, Governor. Yeah, can... <laughs> ba off, flaw off a Paul Jill. I don't know, Anthony. Are you alright, Pax? <laughs> um, I've got, I've got some, uh, some great like information. A stroke. <laughs> if, uh, if, if me, NP, and Mason did a thing, we could call it. Um, uh, blokes from Britain, uh, uh, bro was it? Blokes, blokes from, Britain from Britain talk bloody bollocks. Talk there bollocks. you go. Lots I, of I, I, I think that sounds. I mean, Gareth, you might hit a million subs. You, do <laughs> you might. I'm just saying. Uh, I yeah, love how this has turned into like the accent hour. <laughs> uh, the best British accent on Fraser's scene where Fraser's dad goes an impression of Daphne. His parents were from Manchester in real life, so he nailed it. Oh, that's uh, cool. yeah. that is cool. Let's well, that's see. that's true for um, what's his face as well, isn't it? Um, Mike Myers, his mum was Scottish, wasn't she? Which is why he did such a good Scottish accent in his yeah. stuff. Yeah, um, so, I, I yeah, do remember hearing about that. Yeah. Oh, hello, Kimba. Kimba. Cheers. Right. <laughs> DR Hi, is here. Hello. Yeah. Oh, God. Mason. Mason <laughs> woke up today and chose violence. Man, Nathan, I would crush you in the posh competition, not because I'm a great voice actor, just because you're a jobber. Okay, enlighten me, Gareth. What is jobber? I don't know what jobber is. <laughs> oh, um, Mason's making up words. In the, see, Mason's making up words to confuse my American brain. No, I'm just well, kidding, Mason. My English brain. <laughs> Crush you in the pot competition because I'm a jobber. Brain. I'm a jobber. <laughs> um, what's a jobber? Hold on. Is that weird? Is that, should I know what a jobber is? Gareth, authors are always cruel. We put our characters through hell for the entertainment of complete strangers. I mean, you're not wrong, Mason. Uh, well, do, you know, do, you, humble... do you remember, Pax, what happens to Ethel? I do remember what happens to Ethel. <laughs> She's an old lady. What am I doing? That's, that's horrible. <laughs> that's okay. I, I enjoy the horror, Gareth. Remember, <laughs> I enjoy the horror. I would have been more upset if she would have been like, and happily ever after. Uh <laughs> As a novice author, my humble and experienced advice would be to write stuff that you want to read. Your passion will bleed through. Good advice, Mason. Very good advice. Absolutely. Write yeah. the write the stuff that you want to read. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. If you try <laughs> and do something else, it will fail anyway because you won't uh, you won't relate to it. it. It all goes back to passion. It all goes back to passion. Passion is attractive. Passion is what drives you. It's it's amazing. It all goes back to that at the end of the day. I think. He said, "Religion again. Praise the Lord. Pass the loot." <laughs> yes. Anthony. Well, sadly, it's not very pro-religion. Um. <laughs> uh, that's okay. That's all right. Are you suggesting we build alternate worlds with our words? I'm an author. Hey, you know, William, that's not really bad advice. Alternate worlds with words. It kind of rolls off the tongue nicely, even. 
when uh, when my daughter was really young, we used to have a, our own little language we used to do. And uh, yeah, when she was like three, mm-hmm. and uh, we used to have a little like we used to enjoy that. So that's that sort of reminds me of that what you just said. Uh, oh, that that's was a lot cool. Fun. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I think the American equivalent to bollocks may be gnarly. Uh, see, I think of like like blonde beach boys when I hear gnarly, like gnarly, you know, like, mm, I don't know, maybe, maybe. I think it just means, I think an American version would just be crap. Yeah. Wouldn't it? You say crap a lot. That's bollocks, that's crap. Yeah, that would work. Yeah. Bollocks, shit, something like that. Uh, <laughs> we should form a band called the Bloody Bollocks Trio, debut album, Dogs Bollocks. <laughs> Y'all gotta stop, man. <laughs> that would be it would be the dog's bollocks. Is this why you wanted to have the stream at ten o'clock at night your time, Gareth? Because of crap like this. I do it's think it's why, funny. Isn't it? Okay. Okay, it's my bedtime awesome stream. Gareth packs all the straight. Thank you, Celeste. I'm sure it is your bedtime. All right. Let's see. I do so- stay up late. I mean, you know, when uh, when you were talking about the time here, I do stay up late, so it's not even late for me. Oh, well, that's good. That's good. See, it, it will be for me. Like, uh, my day starts at 4 a.m. So, and that's wow, one thing. I, okay. I should have said this at the beginning. If I sound like a bit of a frog, it's because I taught today. Uh, and anytime I teach, if I have like a phonics day, I have to do a lot of talking and a lot of enunciating. So my, my voice might be a tad fried. Just just a little. It's all at like that I did at like 4 o'clock this morning. Uh, let's see wow. here. There was another one, I feel like, that I did not get to. Oh, this one. Okay. This one. It is temperament. Oh. I like temperament, too. Do you want to say anything before I read it, or do you want to wait till after? Uh, you, You read it first, yeah. All right. I don't know where you're coming from half the time. Your face is confusing and your words don't rhyme. You have no filter and a panic in your tone. It seems you have a drive to be left alone. There's a mark of desperation in your will and your way, a lack of consistency in how you betray. You have no dignity with your bashing around. It seems you have a drive for bringing me down. I love, I love a lack of consistency in how you betray. That was my favorite line. Yeah. I love that. You know, when you know someone who's just so random that it just seems like destruction is there. Oh no! Well, no, but not in a good way. Not not in a good way. Like in a, in a destruction's their thing, and you just don't know when they're gonna attack. Or mm-hmm. yeah, um, I think we all met that person. Yeah, that's kind of where that's coming from. No, I completely agree. Oh God, Nim, it is not a poem about you. <laughs> <laughs> no, he that's said it was a negative way, Nim. It's not about <laughs> it's not about the chaos that we convey. You're fine. You're wearing that badge of pride. <laughs> yeah, you're fine. No, I like that one. I like that one. Um, I, when I pulled it out, I was like, they're going to think I read it because it has the word panic in it. Um, and that's not why, <laughs> I swear to God. Uh, but no, I just I like that one because it really did seem like it was about someone doing something to you. Like it, yeah. was, about, it was about a certain type of individual, which which I really liked. Absolutely. Yeah, it's quite a personal one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it rhymes. We're talking about when we first started this. Yeah. And I think that's that is part of the character of the poem as well. That's not a coincidence. I I, I wanted to um, the way the, the way the rhythm works. It just needs to, it needed to rhyme. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So well, Mason says he can imagine some old school Black Flag style punk behind it. <laughs> that's a yeah, high compliment, okay. though. Yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a pretty good compliment, I think. You'd want a much more simplistic chorus, I think. Otherwise, it's just a really poncy song, isn't it? I, yeah, I, I like it though. Yeah, you know, for all of my um, pomp, I, I really do appreciate simplicity for what it is in a lot of different things. I really do, uh, and I th- that is one thing I think if I had to to really put your because you know I've talked I I've done a couple of videos about poetry books maybe like two at this point, and I would put your poetry book as a really good one for people who were just starting out into poetry and one that's not scary if that makes sense because like for example i think something like this i think would scare the life out of some people they'd be like robert yeah. frost i remember reading him in school i can't read a poem that looks like that you know yeah yeah, yeah. you see this and then you open up your book and see this this looks so much more doable you know yeah yeah 
And so no, it kind true. of scares me sometimes that people think when I say like, oh, your book is great for beginners that I'm trying to like, oh, your book is too simplistic. That's not what I mean. What I mean is like, I think your book is accessible. And that is amazing. That's a huge compliment to me that your book is accessible to everyone, not just like the not to i'm so scared i'm going to bring this back up the comment the posh people it's not just for the posh people it's for everyone and i like that about about your book i think that it's a, that's a wonderful characteristic of it no thank you i, I really appreciate that and, and i think um i get what you're saying i do think it's a compliment because um i wouldn't want it to be so removed from someone's um psyche that they've got to somehow like study it for half an hour before they even get what I'm on about. Right. I think that would be I think I think that even if people have got different interpretations of your poems, that's that poem's failed if you have to study it for half an hour to even start with that poem. Well I mean mean? I think there's a lot of kids in school right now that would really agree with you. Yeah, probably yeah. (laughs) Yeah, that they that they don't want to study stuff like that, you know, that they just want to to read it. And that might be, you know, I've kicked around the idea that that might be one of the reasons that people dislike poetry. You know, it's because yeah, they, it's, too, it's too in your head. It's too up in the clouds or what have you. And, you know, I yeah. have found that that's not really the case in a lot of a lot of ways. You know, yeah, there, yeah, there are yeah. simplistic poems out there that can really speak to you on a very deep level. Yeah. Well, like you we were saying, the, the, what's beautiful about poetry is how it can it can use language in such a uh, great way of conveying something really direct and raw Mm-hmm. With 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 words that are not overdone, they are, they are they are clear, but beautiful. Exactly, you know, um, exactly. And, you know, it makes you think. And there's you something know. about poetry that does that. That like normal, I get normal writing just doesn't accomplish to the same degree. You know, you. I'm not yeah. saying that normal, like a, a normal book or whatever, can be beautiful. It can, um, but there's something about when you slap that poetry on it that it changes it somehow can't really put my finger on it but it changes it somehow yeah because if the use of language is 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 then put into a novel then we are talking about the novel being more poetic and that's Mm -hmm. what we're saying that poetry is using language to do something beautiful isn't it rather than just be plain i I love that i love you know and i I know you you take it to a musical side. I don't because um, I don't have I don't have a musical bone in my entire body. Uh, <laughs> but there there is something about like just the use of language. Like I I'm the nerd that like I'll look at a word and be like, wow, that's really beautiful. Like it can be the most mundane word whatsoever, and I'll be like, wow, that word is just so pretty the way it's written. You know, yeah, and yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm glad that other people do that, and I'm glad that other people have talent to parlay that into things like music. Um, but yeah, it's something about language in and of itself is just absolutely beautiful to me in so the, many the ways. The sounds of words, the, the, some, the sounds of words can be really yeah. powerful as well, can't they? Just yeah, and that's just a fluke, isn't it? But some words just sound so powerful as well. They um, do. Yeah, um, they do. I, used to, I used to when I in school when I used to study French, it used to always amuse me. There's a very beautiful language, really lovely sounds in the words, and uh, and when I when I discovered the word embouteillage. Which is a lovely, lovely word, embouteillage, and it means traffic jam. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like a, a really, a, a awful like, You know, I remember uh, being a little girl. Do you remember the Ramona books, Beverly Cleary? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There, there was a, there was a part in one of the Ramona books where she was being made fun of because she named her her doll Chevrolet, and she thought right. Chevrolet was really pretty. And I remember I was like, "But Chevrolet is a pretty word." And then yeah. I was told that, "Oh no, it's a car brand." <laughs> yeah. I was but, like, why but, yeah, should I mean, we be fun of? Chevrolet is a beautiful name. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, but the French have got a lovely kind of uh, way oh, with words, don't they? Yeah, oh, definitely, sure. yeah. 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 Definitely so what, what do. do you what do you teach, Pax? English. I teach ESL. What what um what age? Uh all ages. Mostly children. Oh, okay. Mostly children. Most of my students are under ten under 12 but i do have a handful of adults that i teach as well so is it private tutoring is it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, well one it's private and, and small classes very small classes yeah. private and small classes yeah. mm-hmm. awesome that's really yeah. cool yeah it's it's the best job in the world if it didn't start at 4 a.m it would be perfect uh, <laughs> yeah is that because actually, you to travel or is it literally like insanely early classes it, well for yeah. them it's not because i have to do their time 
for them to see uh, me. <laughs> okay. That makes for, sense. So, I was just thinking, how does that work? But it makes yeah. sense now. Yeah, for yeah, them, yeah. for them it's their evening. But for me, right. it's it's my morning. So that's awesome. So it's all like a Zoom thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Well, there, I have, I have a number of companies that I work for. So, and they all have their different setups. So, but yeah, essentially it's, it's just online meetings and things like that. That's so, so cool. It's, 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 it's great. It really is. I have, I've learned a lot from them too. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's opened yeah. up a lot of my horizons. Yeah. Yeah. No, same That's, for me as a music teacher. I love the idea of them teaching my poems in school. Kids like, why are you teaching me a poem about a taxi driver? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, um, there's a, there's a, I don't know if, um, I don't know the poem that Mace is talking about, but there's a great Brian Patton poem. He's a, a Liverpool um, poet, a fantastic poet. Um, and uh, he was kind of big in the sixties. And this, there's a really good poem called No Taxis Available by Brian Patton. Well, there you go, Mason. You probably already know that, though, Mason. Uh, <laughs> I didn't, but you probably do. Are you comfortable saying a good poem is one that you want to study for 30 minutes rather than needing to? <laughs> yeah, that's good. good. I like that. that yeah. That's a good point. I that's definitely good. think schools turn people off poetry by teaching the wrong stuff. Nim says, I agree. School turned me off poetry for a while. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I would agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I would say sometimes it's the way it's presented. I think if you get one of those like really passionate teachers, again, going back to passion, I think if you get one of those really passionate teachers, it doesn't have to. Um, I had a really awesome like senior English lit teacher. Um, and like, I remember him reading parts of the Canterbury Tales in old English and, you know, we're sit well, I say we probably just my nerdy ass sitting in the back, like, <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> But yeah, like I, tales, that's, that's tough. Country tales. But I mean, he was reading it to like to like let us hear the old English, like the way it flowed and whatnot. And yeah, yeah. you know, he he was one of those teachers that they make movies about. Like that's how wonderful he was. He was a really good teacher, and he that's had awesome. that passion about English, about words, you know, about. I mean, the the, the case in point with the Canterbury Tales thing. Like, I mean, he didn't just sit up there and go, "Okay, the Canterbury Tales were." Da, 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 da. Like he could have done that, but he didn't. You know, he was like, well, yeah. here's what it sounded like in this. And and it brought it alive to all of us, to all of us 17-year-olds, which half of us probably didn't give it a bollock. Um, <laughs> I don't think I did the right, right. You, you, right, Garrett. You didn't give a bollock. It sounds That's weird. That's amazing. It sounds weird in my American tongue. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Uh, but yeah, so, I mean, I, I, think, I think it doesn't have to. I think it often turns, I think school often turns you off of stuff because of the way it's presented. But if you get a teacher with that passion, you know, again, going I think, back to I, passion. I tell you what, I mean, I, that is the, weird, the interesting thing about teaching as a profession that I think every single person has got a teacher in their past that, was someone that they'll always remember. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And it could be for various reasons, could be any kind of subject, but there's always a teacher that they always remember. They'll always refer to, oh, you know, Mr. Jones or... A good one or and Mr. a bad one. Whatever. <laughs> hey? A good one and a bad one. You have a good one that you remember yeah. and a bad one that you remember. My third yeah, grade true. teacher was awful. Hated her. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you have a good one and a bad one that you remember. No, absolutely. And yeah. I mean, and I don't know about you, but like I strive to be a teacher that people will hopefully remember. I have a box of stuffed animals that I use for like the phonics kids. Like I'll have like awesome. like oh snake, you know, like <laughs> rabbit, rabbit. Yeah. So yeah, that, I'm sure awesome. they get off and tell their their kids like this idiot has like stuffed animals coming out of the <laughs> ceiling. Um, uh, yeah. let's see. I agree, Nathan. Never forget spending a million years analyzing the vultures, only for one, only for it to not come up on the exam. Oh. <laughs> let's see. Let's see, Namiri. Yeah, anyone I know that doesn't read it, we're all turned off by the way it was taught. Kids don't want to have to dissect 18th century language and then unpack metaphors. <laughs> you know what? You know the poem, and I promise I'm going somewhere with this. Do you know the poet John Donne? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. My that yeah. same no man, no man's teacher, an island. Well, Say again. The same high school English teacher. Our pro, one of our projects in that was we had to memorize "Death Be Not Proud" by John Donne. Okay. I have it tattooed. That's how much <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Cool. Death be not yeah, proud. Yeah, I can awesome. still say it, and I can still close my eyes and see that man. 
st- in this 50 year old man in like a plaid shirt and khakis telling us <laughs> that telling a bunch of 17 year olds he was like when you're all on your deathbed you're going to remember this poem and it's going to give you comfort 20 some odd years later i can still quote it and i got it tattooed that's awesome so i feel like he he did his job as a teacher yeah absolutely yeah (laughs) yeah absolutely Let's see. I have a poem called The Taxi Driver My Channel, Gareth. It's about people's lives play out in the back seat, but ignore his story. I love it. I'll have, I'll, I'll watch it, Mason. I will definitely watch that. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. Uh, the MP, John Dunn does rock. He does. I have a whole I have a whole book of his poetry. I love John Dunn. But I can still yeah, yeah. quote Death Be Not Proud from memory because of that teacher. And it's a beautiful poem. And it's talking about like how we will live on after our death and it's talking it, to me it's always been like it's talking to death like why why are you so pompous you know like i don't know i just always like that one yeah yeah that's awesome yeah yeah uh, um, let's see people live I, on <laughs> i would get something from invictus well invictus is po- yeah if you're ever gonna get tattooed invictus is popular yeah yeah let's see I had a great English teacher in junior in junior school. Really instilled a love of literature for me. Turned me into poetry and play junkie. Got us into Julius Caesar and Hamlet at age twelve. That's awesome. That is really yeah. cool. Uh, Hamlet is a, is a phenomenal piece of work. Um, oh yeah, and, well, I, and I don't think, that, think, I think Hamlet, Hamlet was not my first one. I think Macbeth. I had a teacher take us to see Macbeth play once. I was going. I was just about to say. I think when you see them performed, it's so much better than reading it on the page. It is, uh, and, and yeah, um, and I saw when we studied Macbeth in school, it was the uh, we saw the film done by is it Zeffirelli, the uh, Martin Shaw film. We saw that. Uh, so this is well back in the eighties. This was, um, but then I saw Hamlet performed at the National Theatre when I because I studied theatre studies A level, um, and uh, it was um, Mark Rylance played Hamlet. So oh, Mark wow. Rylance is quite a big guy now, and he's, he's he's quite famous now. But at the time, he was like, he's pretty unknown. Um, he was getting lots of theatre critics saying he was good, but he hadn't done any films or anything. Um, and now he's the BFG. <laughs> um, oh, right, but, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but he was, he was brilliant in, as Hamlet. Yeah, he really was. It was amazing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Well, let's see. Adam, said, Adam I, I think I might agree with you. Shel Silverstein was one of my first poems, too. Following up. I think that's Shel Silverstein, isn't it? Is it falling up, Shel Silverstein? Tell me, Adam. See if I'm right. Because I'm pretty sure I mentioned that in the Poetry Newbie tag that Nim didn't really tag me in, but that I did anyway, <laughs> um, because that's what I do. Uh, your, tags are, your tags are so funny. It's, it's so cool. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I did yours. <laughs> not, not, your, not your five one, but the last one. I, I've yeah. got tags. I need more Tuesdays. <laughs> I've got tags filmed through January because I people tag me and I do them and I'm just like one a week, you know, like yeah. and I, just, I have them. So they're, they're all filmed. They're all ready to go. It's just, I need more Tuesdays in a month than four. Uh, <laughs> let's see. I always found Invictus really inspiring when I was going through my sight loss. My head is bloody, but I'm about, Hey, you know, that it really applies. I can see that. Wow. Definitely yeah. That's, that. that's, that's really big as well. I mean, uh, to get comfort from something as serious as that is is really big, isn't it? So, oh, definitely. I still read yeah. Shel Silverstein regularly. He gets dismissed as being just for kids, but his stuff is both dark and fun, so I recommend it to adults to revisit. Yeah, I loved him. I'm pretty sure. Am I right? Is that falling up? I know he had a few. I think there was a few books of Shel Silverstein, but I know the one I had was falling up with this little like this little kid, and he was like, it looked like he was flying on the cover. Yeah. Oh, Nim, you tagged me in the comments. Okay. Well, honestly, Nim, I was getting ready and to like film that day, and I just sat down and did it. I don't know if I even read. I just did it anyway. Uh, yeah, falling up. Okay, cool. I am thinking of the same one because it's a very distinctive style. His uh, his books. Can we there's a there's a there's another there's another guy from Liverpool that uh, I really like that is often called like a he's seen as a children's um, poet entertainer sometimes. But he he writes some really good stuff. Roger McGough, so he's quite famous in Britain. Um, Roger McGough, he did, he was t- he took part in a band called The Scaffold as well. Did Lily the Pink, which is a bit of a dated song now. But um, but yeah, he's a really interesting poet, I think, from Liverpool. Roger McGough. So somebody somebody in the chat might know him. Oh, uh, very but yeah, he's, cool. Yeah. That's interesting. I it's, it's weird when the one. Well, I mean, you guys know I do my little library series. I'm all about stuff for kids, anyway. You know, like the weird <laughs> stuff for kids. Um, 
<laughs> Mason, can we collectively agree to tag packs in any tag we ever do? <laughs> yeah. Y'all don't listen to Mason. <laughs> uh, Shell has some adult stuff and it's rad with illustrations and all. Ooh. Oh, okay. I did not know that. The only thing I was familiar with is, is like books like the falling up and the kids stuff. So that's interesting. Very I need neat. to look into Shell. Yeah, something. absolutely. Yeah. 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 Oh, MP Roger McGough is definitely a good recommendation. Gareth. Cool. Nice one. Yeah, very from cool. the same kind of area as NP as well, because Manchester and Liverpool are very close. Oh, okay. See, see, yeah. I, I, I probably could have told you that if I was looking at a map. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, I went to Liverpool for the first time uh, last summer. Um, so it was a bit of a big, dramatic summer last summer because I was in hospital and stuff. And as a big, uh, when, when I was recovering and stuff, uh, we we said we had a family holiday booked in Wales, and it was we said we're still going to go, and we got a wheelchair and all sorts of things to make sure I could go. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty serious, and uh, and we I didn't actually end up using the wheelchair, which is really cool. But uh, we went to Liverpool on the way to Wales, and it's the first time I'd ever been, and I actually loved it. And we nearly went to Manchester as well because it's obviously next door, and we were like, oh, we could go to Manchester. But we are, I think, we're going to go to Manchester next year, just me and my wife. So, um, so that would be really cool, and then we're going to go up to Scotland after that. But um, but yeah, that was a really important holiday. That was that was it was me. It was the four of us, so me and my wife and the two kids they're old now um we went we went over they're, so they're always your kids yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um so yeah so well, that's awesome very cool awesome. yeah not too far from stoke either all oh, right yeah yeah that's true well very neat very neat i'm surprised we have so many because i know it's late for you all i'm so all of you in the uk thank you for hanging out i know it's late for all of you so that really means a lot yeah, thanks so much. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, on a Monday night. On a Monday night, no less. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. On a Monday night, no less. Do you know well, the word knackered? <laughs> we'll all be knackered tomorrow. Na- knackered. Yeah, no, knackered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Na- See, that's one that I can't say without my twain coming out, Gareth. Knackered. 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 <laughs> See, you hear it. You hear it at the end. Knackered. Knackered. <laughs> it sounds awesome. It sounds better when I say knackered. Let's see, knackered would be one. Let's see, uh, the word L I N E. L I N E, line. Line, no, line, line. Oh, la- yeah, line, yeah, okay. Line. So, yeah. The, so, to me, you, it sounds like lying, line. Right. But that's how right. it sounds to my ears. I can't stand it when I say that word. Line. Can you try and say? Can you try and say knackered without? Well, as an English, can you try and do knackered with an English voice? Oh God. <laughs> Uh, only because I like you, Gareth. Okay. Um, <laughs> no, I can't do it. <laughs> Knackered. <laughs> yeah, that, that's as close as I'm going to get. Knackered. <laughs> oh, my God. That's hard. There's a, there's a I've, I've started watching this booktuber, or not booktuber, a YouTuber that goes on about English things. He's just like every single thing is about Englishness, and he did this. And, and I found him because he's going on about accents, and he was, and he was like really amused by saying "go," and he kept going, "Oh, so English people go go," and they they linger on the "o," oh. and I've never thought of it before, but apparently American people just go "go go" or something "go." I don't go? know, but we go "go," and we apparently it's a big deal that we. Say take ages to do the O bit. Go. Well, see, but that it. I might be the wrong American to ask about that because I've heard that in the South we speak slower than people <laughs> in the North. Um, I've heard anyway. I mean, I don't. Again, I mean, I have people that I talk to in the North, and they don't sound that different than me. Um, at least not for mo- for the most part. I, I make a lot of fun about my accent. Honestly, it doesn't bother me that much. Um. I have certain words that it comes out real strong to my ears, but most of the time I don't mind it. Uh, but I have heard that in the South, we speak a little bit slower. So How maybe say go, go, go. Same as, same as we say, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. That doesn't sound any different to me, but maybe we say yeah. it slower. So we, we have time to say the O. I'd say that just a load of bollocks. What you just said there. <laughs> See, I can't say bollocks. It doesn't sound right on my American tongue. Bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just say bollocks isn't right on your American tongue? Yeah, do- damn it, Gareth! <laughs> it's just rude. We're done. We're it's done. 
All right. All right. Mason's lying in bed while he listens. Are you talking about me trying to say, or are you talking about me trying to say knackered in an English accent? Knackered. Knackered. (laughs) (laughs) I haven't worked on 13 shifts, so I'll be up anyway. Still knackered, though. Still knackered, though. I'm just glad to have something to entertain me on this boring site. Uh, Let's see. I I like the fact that he's the best. (laughs) <laughs> uh, you just went you said knackered with English voice and you said though with English voice as well that was awesome knackered you went, though you went, no. <laughs> Gareth this might this might be the weirdest one we've done yet I love it alright this is one well constructed insult I heard on British TV show once it feels very forced trying to say it in a North American accent it rolls off the tongue better with the right accent oh yeah definitely yeah. I can see that I can see that well, it's just like, uh, oh, what would it? What would a southern one be? I'm gonna, I'm gonna beat hine in. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna beat your hine in. Like, <laughs> What's like, that mean? But, but like, I'm gonna beat your but, like, but your hind, like your behind. Oh, in. Hind. Hind hind in. In. I'm gonna beat hind your hind in. Yeah. <laughs> hind in. It sounds hind like it's, it's the verb to hind. Well, it's like, it's, I, I, I always assumed it was like you're behind, like your butt. Like, I'm going to beat no, no, your butt. It would be. It yeah, would be. like, I'm going to beat your hind, your behind in. I mean, you can't break that. You can't break it down, Gareth. It's not going to make sense. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's I'm gonna quite beat a crazy in. image. You're going to beat it in. So, <laughs> you're going to beat it inside the body? Is it? <laughs> you're thinking too much about it, Gareth. Don't think that okay. hard about it. <laughs> okay. Don't yeah. think too hard on it. Don't think it's like it's like I'm gonna beat then, your hot end. That's that's probably a southern thing. But then we say, um, that does my head in. And what does that mean? It does my head in. Where's what where does it go? In what? <laughs> but but when if something if something is confusing, go, oh that does my head in. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, or I'm, it bakes your noodle. Same same phrase. <laughs> oh you said you you say some amazing phrases in your videos. It's just <laughs> well, amazing. Thank you. Yeah, Thank there was you. like lots of the paxisms. Uh, paxisms. Maybe. Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> wow, TM <laughs> paxisms. Uh, yeah. I, I honestly, I think that just comes from from not scripting a damn thing, Gareth. I think that's what yeah. that comes from. But then, I just I don't know, there might be phrases that you say all the time that just I don't know that everyone around you says, but I, some of them I've never heard before. They just crack me up. Some of them. <laughs> God, well, God only knows. <laughs> it's hard to tell. Honestly, it's hard to tell what comes out of my mouth in a video. Uh, Mason, I swear to God, pack say. <laughs> All right, we are coming up on two hours, so this this we do need to wind it down. Uh, only because I like you, Mason. All right, mate, go away. I'm bloody knackered, and you're talking bollocks. All right, Mason, next up, I'm going to have you say stuff in southern accents on your live stream. Oh, you got to be careful, Mason. You know, it could go the other way. Um, that was amazing. Well, no, I think, honestly, I we it comes up a lot, but I think the reason why accents and stuff come up in my live streams is because I do love language, and I love the way words are phrased. I know that sounds like a, a super nerdy thing to say, but I really do. I love I love to hear the way people phrase words and the way their tongue shapes things. It's amazing yeah. to me. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And, and because, you know, what you're doing is mostly about language. Um, it's a big part of it as well, isn't it? So, mm-hmm. you know, how absolutely. you say something is... Um, it's like uh, it's part of the rhythm of it as well. It's not just the the pronunciation, but it actually affects how the line is said, isn't it? Exactly, and it affects like the way it's perceived in some ways. I, and mm. I love that though. Ima- that kind of power in just saying a word just absolutely blows me away. I love that. Absolutely love yeah. that. I really do. Okay. All right. We, we'll be winding it down. William, the insult. I should say it. I should like to say it was a pleasure meeting your acquaintance, my dear. Honestly, alas, forbids it. Yes. Yeah, see, it's not going to roll off in my tongue. It's not going to roll that's off a, in my North American tongue. That's, that's, that's posh English, isn't it? Oh, okay. That, that would be why it doesn't roll off in my tongue, because there's mm-hmm. nothing posh about me. So. <laughs> 
All right. Um, There's probably never been a live stream featuring the words bollocks and knackered anywhere near as much as this. Does that make me honorarily British? Yeah. I'm kidding. Well, you, you sounded like you were British a minute ago. I it was, did not. It, it, it scares you were full of it? No, I did not. Okay. <laughs> Well, that'll be rootin' tootin', partner. I'm always down for a challenge. Yeehaw, I hate myself. <laughs> that, that was spot on, Mason. My God, you could have been my neighbor growing up. It was so Southern. <laughs> is, there, right. is, there another, is there another poem that we were going to talk about? Um, do you have one that you would like to end with? Yeah, I wouldn't mind um, doing uh, the, last, the last one of the book. Okay. Was um, Deliberate. Um, so I knew that I was going to put these poems in alphabetical order. Mm -hmm. So I, so I wrote this knowing that I wanted the, I wanted it to be the last one. So I, I deliberately titled it where it would go in the book. Oh, okay. You just titled it with um, a Y. Yeah. Okay. Um, and there's, there's a couple of other Ys, but it's, um, it's, I just knew it would be the last one. Um, so, so this is, um, it, it's a, it is a political song, but it's uh, so, sorry, pl a political poem that shows you my brain. A political poem, but it's not a, it's not specific to a particular uh, issue. It's just okay. about making a difference. Okay. So, um, yeah. So, I, if, if it's, okay, it's okay, I'll read this. Sure, absolutely, right? absolutely. Um, so, um, it's called "You've Got to Make a Difference." Okay. And uh, the idea is whatever you do, even if you don't realize you're doing it, you're making a difference. So you've got to make a difference in everything you touch, in everything you say and everything you love. You've got to make a difference because you will just that. You can't avoid the difference you make. You can't deny the act. If you're determined to keep away, that will be your power. Your lack of presence or influence will feed the great allower. You've got to make a difference despite what you might like. And pleading holy innocence is purely just childlike. I love that. And I'm glad. I really think it's good that you wrote it in such a way that it can be applied to so many things. Not like mm. one particular political viewpoint. I do. Mm. I think that's amazing. And it's it's very true. It is so true. The things that you love and put your energy into, that is what, uh, you know, that's what makes a difference in the world. Again, going back yeah. to passion. <laughs> Yeah, and all yeah. those people who say that, oh, you know, nobody really makes a difference. Everybody does all the time in everything. Yeah, that's I mean, that's I good to remember because a lot of times you don't remember that. You know, you think you're just existing. Yeah. So it, it's a wonderful reminder that, yeah, you do definitely make a difference no matter what. Even just existing, you can make a difference yeah. to someone. Oh. Well, and, and, you know, the way that we've made friends on here and, you know, the way that we've exchanged our accents, you know, <laughs> through the last two hours. Poorly. <laughs> poorly. We've exchanged our accents poorly. Don't forget that, Gareth. Yeah. But no, those, but those friendships really make a difference to our lives, don't they? And and, and our understanding of each other and, and our worldview is expanded. You know, everything oh is... Oh, my Lord. Is, you know, Gareth, if you just told me two years ago that I'd be sitting here on a live stream talking about books with someone in the, in the UK right now, I'd have laughed my hind in off. <laughs> <laughs> There is no way in the last year and a half. Cause let's see, August, August was a year for my channel. So what year and a half ish. It's, it's amazing. It's so crazy. Yeah. 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 Fantastic. So I, I agree. I agree. It's, it's a beautiful accident <laughs> that such things happen. It really is. Cause I mean, and I really, I, I know everybody says it, but on booktube, like our little corner of booktube, I feel like we really did hit the lotto when it comes to like internet people yeah, yeah, <laughs> because yeah, we yeah. really have a very positive se section of the internet. You know, the internet gets a lot of, of grief about like, Oh, it's terrible and horrible and people troll you and they're terrible to you. And then you come to our little part of booktube and it's like, maybe it's not that bad. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You know, Actually, like, it can be nice. Yeah, we're we're all kind of nice here. We're we're spread out all over the world, but we're we're all very nice to each other. And I think, <laughs> uh, you know, honestly, if I really, if you really want me to pick that apart for a second, I think it's because we're readers and our we see that the world is so much more than just us because yeah. we read. We read about all these other viewpoints. We know that yeah. the world is a big place and that there's room for everyone. Yeah, absolutely. 
All yeah. right. So let's see. Anthony, nerdiness rocks. <laughs> Anyone who denies <laughs> this is talking bollocks, mate. <laughs> <laughs> My God. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Pax being your neighbor would have would have been as fine as the sunshine off of Bumblebee's back partner. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I agree. The ending on that one, yes, Nim. The ending on that poem was amazing. That one is definitely purely childlike. Ah, uh, that's Mitt Gareth. Loved hearing your stuffy mates. Yeah, uh, thank you. Thanks so much, very, Mason. Very nice. Feed, uh, very nice. Feed the great allower. Thanks for sharing, Gareth. Awesome stuff. Great poems. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Star, great live stream. Dead poets are now happily decomposing. <laughs> uh, the stream has been the dog's bollocks. I'm so glad you arranged this. Well, MP, it was honestly a happy accident from your comment because Gareth yeah. thought we'd already had arranged it, and we just rolled from there because you know how you know how I roll. Nothing is ever planned, planned. Uh, so, well, Gareth, any yeah. parting words? Any parting stuff for the comments? Uh, well, anyone that watches this that um, is thinking about watching my stuff or has watched my stuff or has commented on my stuff, thank you. You know, it's a massive thanks, you know, as I get a chance to say thanks. Because like we've been saying, it is so much fun and the friends we've made is so cool. And like when we make friends with the people who comment or that kind of thing, it really is very real, isn't it? And sure. uh, it's lovely to... Yeah, you get encouraged to do it by getting subscribers. So it's really lovely um, when people get involved. So, yeah, I, I de definitely would have wanted to take the opportunity to thank people. So, so yeah. Yeah, it's like you can, we can never say thank you enough. We really can't. Because yeah. there, there's just so many commenters and people that don't even have channels that, you know, you kind of get to know because they hang around your channel. Like Anthony's one of those for me. Like, you know, yeah. they hang around your channel and you get to know them. So, yeah. yeah. And then Pax, you personally, you've done so much for my channel and for me oh. as a writer and, and, you know, and I really honestly appreciate it so much. Really do. Oh my honestly. gosh. Well, yeah. thank you. That's, that's yeah. a very high compliment. Thank you, Gareth. That's very sweet of and, you to say. And genuinely, I, I was absolutely like blown away when you sent me a Halloween card. I've never had a Halloween card from oh. anybody. <laughs> Even in this country, I've never had one. And that was just amazing. Just like, yeah, if I have wow, your address, I'll send you a Halloween card. <laughs> <laughs> what but I honestly, loved was, was so funny. Did you see Books of Blood? He was talking about when John pulled it up. He was like, "I didn't even have to open it. And I knew who it was from." <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Y'all have no idea how hard it is to find green greeting cards. Yeah, like I can like imagine. pure green greeting cards. It's all green <laughs> and red for Christmas. And I was like, mm. "No, I don't want red. Damn it, I want green <laughs> green greeting cards." <laughs> all right. Yeah, no, I really Let's appreciate see. it. Of course, yeah, definitely. If I have your address, you're getting a Halloween card. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, these Dead Poet streams are always great. Pax has the greatest chemistry with everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Mason. I just, I'm just surprised anybody wants to talk to me for this long. Um, <laughs> I figured he'd be on your list anyway. And he was. He was on my list anyway. But you just sort of like pushed him to the forefront because I had it in my head that I wasn't going to do anything for December because of the holidays and people being busy. So then MP, when this happened, it was just like, do you want to be on the live stream, Gareth? Monday? <laughs> cool. <laughs> All right. Gareth, I hope you realize by introducing me to you, Pax has now subjected you to my novel length comments. <laughs> let me tell you, let me tell you what happens to let me tell you what happens to me every day, Gareth, when I post a video. Um, because of the time difference, I'm assuming. Um, the following day when I get up for work. Um, a lot of times I'll check my, you know, and you go into the studio and you can see all your comments. I go into the studio and Mason's comment will be there from like 45 minutes ago from it's four o'clock in the morning for me, but it'll be like from 45 minutes ago for Mason. And so yeah. I'm just sitting there like, <laughs> <laughs> like reading his comment at like four o'clock in the morning. So yeah. Right. yeah. Also, you can't wait. Me and you could talk for hours. We could derail your stream so bad. We could. Yeah. Are you talking about me? Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, I mean, he, I wants to, he wants to you know, maybe break the record. <laughs> well, I think this might be our longest one so far, Gareth. So far, I think you hold oh, the record. Really? If nothing else, you hold the record for um, bollocks and all of that. <laughs> the yeah. most amount of bollocks, yeah. So, but maybe the most amount of dogs' bollocks as well. Uh, exactly, lucky. exactly. We have to make that distinction for all of our American <laughs> friends that, that one yeah. is good and one is not. Uh, 
<laughs> All right, guys. Well, it has been a little over two hours. And uh, I do, as Steve Talks Books, who honestly got me bitten with the streaming bug, uh, says we do try to respect people's time. So, uh, and plus, isn't it coming up on midnight for you, Gareth? Uh, it's 10 past 12 at the minute. So uh, that's about at least two hours before my bedtime. Oh, good Lord, Gareth. Okay. I thought I was an insomniac. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I've got some reading, I've got some reading to do. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, actually, yeah, I might I, I don't know. I might do that. We'll I'm, see. I'm, I mean, I'd much rather chat, but um but absolutely <laughs> it's important to uh to let to apologize for talking for so long. It's important to let oh. people carry on with their lives. Oh, Lord, no, no. Well, I mean, honestly, if it was up to me, I mean, I part of me kind of was like, because I've seen people do these sprints for like six hours, and I was like, but could I call it a sprint and then just talk the whole time? <laughs> you could do a thing where you invite different people on at different times and like oh that's that true mean, that's that true god can you see it me trying to teach the next day okay <laughs> repeat after me yeah i wouldn't be able to talk like i could feel it now like i'm gonna have to go have some tea myself after this <laughs> yeah tea is good I, oh I, yeah it's been a it's been a good hour since my cup of tea so i need to make another one. Oh um, yeah absolutely yeah. All right, well, guys, William says goodbye. Mason says that Gareth is the heavyweight bollocks champion of the world. <laughs> uh, had to get one last bollocks in there. All right, uh, and thanks for the fun live stream. Love hearing the poems. Thank you, Nim. All right, guys. Thanks, well, everyone, thank you for watching. Everyone in the past, thank you for watching. In the future, thank you for watching. And all of you have a good night, good morning. Since it's Gareth's morning, we'll say good morning. Uh, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> all right. Bye, everyone. Uh, happy Christmas. <laughs>